No black cats, just straight facts. Triple P certified. Listen, we can talk about odds all day. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It matters what's gonna happen. Welcome to the Triple P. It's perfect for late pursuit time. I'm joined as always by the Euro Under King, Alex, and Danny the Batman. Lieutenant Dan, how are you boys? <clears throat> Doing all right. Um, once more, not a profitable week. Thanks a lot. Jack Johnson, Jack Jenkins, whatever your name is. Uh, wait, wait a minute. I don't want anybody's ears to be deceived and then to just tune out right here, right now. We had a very profitable week. We triple B certified Sean Strickland. I won over $1,100. I, <laughs> won on, I won on Gabriel Miranda. I faded Shane Young to his grave, as usual. We won so much money if you're betting with me on my event sheet that you are probably looking at what you should spend it on. Uh, but Alex, Dan, they're here. Um, I went 9 out of 12. I had a great night. I looked back. I've won... I've had profitable gambling evenings where I've posted my winnings in my live open bet sheet on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Pursuit. Seven out of the last 10, everybody. Seven out of the last motherfucking 10. Not since Nate Diaz fell to Jake Paul and Jake Paul became my new favorite fighter have I lost. And it's, I mean, I've lost between then and now, but that was the last kind of big event. And I'm going to, we're going to go back through these last 10 and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the three events that I did lose on because you're going to find I wasn't even watching those events, and I actually wasn't even betting them really either. I was in another state. I was uh, camping uh, for one of them. So we're going to talk all about that. But Sean Strickland, we truly certified him on the show. We got it done, everybody. I mean, this is just getting crazy. Two Seans, two dogs, two months. We knocked it out of the park with two big underdog main event championship title takers. And uh, we're going to talk all about Sean Strickland versus Israel Adesanya, the whole card, top to bottom. And then we're going to break down Fiziya versus Gamera. Why did I want to say Nikolai? Uh, not Nikolai Negamarianu. Rafael Fiziev. Rafael Fiziev is going to be fighting uh, Mateus Gamrat. And uh, Bryce Mitchell's on the card. It's a fight night event. 11 bouts taking place Saturday, September 23rd from the Apex in Las Vegas. We're going to get you an early glimpse at that card. Top to bottom, main card and prelims. Then we're going to hop over to the Patreon breakdown. Alexa Grasso versus Valentino Shevchenko too. If you want our early predictions, we already gave you them. Top to bottom, main card and prelims on the YouTube channel, go take a look at those. But if you want to hear us break it down again in the Patreon, which we are now calling, we figured out a new name for the Patreon, everybody, the FTC Club. What does that stand for? Fine Tooth Comb Club, baby. The Comb Club. We are going to be breaking down every single fight, but as we have been in all of year four, pretty much, twice. We do an initial breakdown early, as we're going to do for Fazaya versus Gamrot today here on the YouTube channel after we recap Strickland versus Adesanya UFC 293. We're going to break down Rafael Faziv versus Mateus Gamrat for the 23rd. And then we're going to go through it next Monday again with a fine tooth comb in the fine tooth comb club. This week in the FTC, we're going to be breaking down Alexa Grasso versus Shevchenko again. I don't know if anything's changed for these boys. I don't know if anything's even changed for me yet. I'm going to have to take another look at it with my comb. I'm going to have to get my comb out and to look through it again. But guys, it's been working out. I mean, like I said, seven of the last 10 events, extremely profitable, hundreds of dollars, sometimes over a thousand dollars in a night on big, big bets. And I mean, it's, I think, largely due to the fact that we are breaking cards down two times a week uh, or two times, you know, before they occur, two times in two weeks. Um, so we'll get you Fazia versus Gamrot coming up quick. But there's also some big news topics in the Discord. Make sure you guys get in that Discord. Over 200 members strong right now. We got in that Discord chatting it up every Saturday and all throughout the week now. You know, it's football season. So we're talking Monday night football, Thursday night football, Sunday football. We got a large community. It's fall. It's the best time to be in the Discord. So get in there. We got some people posting some news stories that they want us to talk about. A uh, Russian MMA fighter recently fought and lost in the UFC. His name is Hussein Ashkabov. It was reported that he's been arrested in Thailand. Really interesting story. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But we got more important fish to fry right now, everybody. Sean Strickland, the American champion, the American middleweight champion. How does that sound? That sounds fantastic. I mean, <clears throat> you would have to look very hard to find people – who were betting on Sean Strickland this weekend. Um, yes, he was a big dog, and maybe some people put some feelers out there just to just in case. Um, I mean, we saw Drizzy Drake put $500,000 on Israel Adesanya by knockout um, this, this past weekend. And we also saw another anonymous better that was mentioned on the broadcast who put $250,000 on Israel Adesanya. 220, 220. 220, 220,000 to only win a measly 30 grand. Um, 
But guys like us, guys like Donald Cerrone, we came out with the masks on. We robbed the bank. We got rid of one of our least favorite fighters in the UFC. No, 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 no immediate rematch. You just got that belt back, buddy. You haven't even defended it yet. So <laughs> so get get out of here with all that. Um, Donald Cerrone bet like eight grand on, on Sean Strickland to win 39,000. I was, I was very happy to see that. Although I, I do disagree with Donald Cerrone lately. Um, I, I think he's, he, he needs to go to the cuckoo bin, maybe, maybe the old folks home, something like that. Something. Why? To, Why? What is Donald doing? This coop that's. Oh, he's talking crap on, on Tate. He wants to fight Tate now, apparently. Well, no, but Tate kind of drew first blood a little bit there. He did. <laughs> Donald Cerrone talked crap first and Tate said, I'll fight him. Fine, whatever. I uh well I'll have to get my story straight there, I guess. But I thought that Andrew Tate had mentioned something about him losing to McGregor. He did after Donald Cerrone called him out. Okay, okay. Well, either way, I mean it's it's the fight Donald Cerrone should be looking for. It's equivalent, if not greater than if no, it's definitely Tate's no no, I mean Tate's the most Googled man of the year, definitely. So it's like if you get a fight with him, it's like getting a Logan Paul, Jake Paul. It's like getting a fucking Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor fight all in one, you know? It's like getting the Musk fucking Zuck fight, you know? So mm-hmm. Donald Cerrone, I, I got to give him a little bit of a, a little bit of credit there. It's like, you know, it's like whatever. You know, he's, he, he's standing his ground. Can't expect anything less. But guys, Sean Strickland's the UFC middleweight champ. We triple B certified him on the YouTube episode. When we went back on the Patreon episode, Alex untriple B certified him on the Patreon episode after the weigh-ins. I know he's regretting that. I know that, you know, I, listen, I'm not a liar. I'm not going to bury any leads or hide any information. It's there for everybody to see in the Patreon that Alex was still high on Sean, but you had a little bit of a second thought. So I'm formally going to, for the record keeping purposes, we only had two trophy certified picks on the night, UFC 293. We had Jack Jenkins and we had, uh, who else do we have? Jack Jenkins and... Uh, Goldberg? No. no. Jamie, the, the two worst picks of, of the whole card, all right? So Jack Jenkins and Jamie Malarkey. Jack Jenkins, one of just three picks that I got wrong. Uh, everybody got Jack Jenkins wrong. And that was – some people will tell you that's a weird uh, freak accident. It wasn't no freak accident. He made a mistake. I mean, it's not a freak accident when the ball goes through somebody's legs in baseball. It's called an error. Yeah, it was an error. He did the wrong thing. <laughs> he, he made a wrong choice with his brain and got his arm broken. And I'm so sick of guys getting absolutely dismantled, hurt, unable to even go to their own after party. And then acting like it wasn't a big deal. Dude, Jack Jenkins, that was a big deal. Not only did you lose, you got rendered incapacitated. You cried. Like, he couldn't have beaten you more decisively if you think about it. And you weren't even able to go to the after party. So it's like, guys, we sort of got to start judging this stuff on if you do or don't get to go to your after party. Because in the past, if you went to the hospital or to the hotel room instead of the party, nobody gave you any kudos, applause, thumbs up, or likes. No Shout challenge. out to BJ Penn. He went to the hospital, I went to the bar. Exactly, and that means more than anything because if you go to the hospital or your hotel room in the past, you didn't used to get to have a party, but now you do get to have a party. It's called a pity party. You get to throw a pity party for yourself (laughs) on social media, and you get to have everybody say, oh, praying hands, thumbs up, you'll be back, praying hands, fist, (laughs) heart, fist, heart, praying hands, fist together, fist outstretched. You know, it's like enough with the emojis, enough with the pity party. Sit in your hotel room. Take. I think if you lose, your phone should be taken from you, put in one of those uh, yonder bags, zipped up, locked, given to Joe Rogan and Dave Chappelle for the time. And, and that goes for months after the fight. Like, I, I don't think Aljamain Sterling should have had his phone out at that fight, and it definitely shouldn't have said sugar rematch on it. Now, we got all these fighters putting their phone up with little messages on it, taking pictures. Sugar handled it the best. He said no. He just said no. <laughs> That's it. Nah. Or you know why? Because Aljo put a question mark. He was asking. Yeah, he was asking. So he said no. And hey, then Corey Fanhagen. Does Corey Fanhagen want to ask? <laughs> <laughs> if Corey Fanhagen was there, would have just said Sugar, uh, do my podcast? Uh, <laughs> it'd be Sugar, be friends with me. Sugar, I'm a big fan. Yo, let's let's Photoshop one with uh, Corey Fanhagen with that look on his face after he got, and then it, it'll be him going like this, holding up as his big fan. <laughs> sugar comma big fan <laughs> that's all i oh i'm working on it literally right now but luke that, that, that these bones it, it's getting out of hand now um you know we got what, what's the guy name uh marlon chito vera he he holds it up he says i'm next and then of course the ewok comes out of the fucking the the trees for a couple seconds i didn't even know he had a phone guys i didn't know he knew how to operate a phone that must have been somebody else's i have no idea how marab 
I, I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. Mar- Marab Devashili doesn't He goes really... back to his hobbit hole. I don't even think he gets service. That must be a satellite phone. It has to be. It has to be. Or somebody else's. Because I don't even think he can spell, guys. Like, somebody had to have typed that message up for him. And he says, wait your turn. Oh, like you've been waiting your turn for the past nine months, not yeah, you fighting? Know, you know that's a part of your value structure, waiting yeah. and sitting in line and your turn and all that. It sounds a little communist to me, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, and, um, you know, last time I checked, Marab Devashvili was asking for Sterling to get the next title shot. What is going on here? This is this is absolutely ridiculous, but I think we got to stay on the topic at hand here. We do, we do. You're, you're always bringing it back to these nobodies, these nothing. Well, it happened at the fight. It happened at the fight. I saw Aljamain Sterling. It made right. me it made again. Me vomit. It made on, me up. I, I don't need you to justify why you're doing something that's making me very annoyed, upset, and irate at you. But we can just continue <laughs> to move on. And uh, listen, Aljamain Sterling doesn't matter. He lost to a Sean. Sean Strickland took out Izzy. We got just one more troll champ to become champ. And Colby Covington is it. And he's going to destroy Leon Edwards. We're taking all the belts back. We took one from Jamaica. We took one from uh, China, Nigeria, New Zealand. I don't know where that one came out of, but <laughs> it's from somewhere. Uh, and, we, and now we're about to take one up out of London town. And it's going to be great. We got three American champs, three troll champs, three champs that nobody thinks can fight. If you think, I mean, besides Colby, I guess. Colby's the only one of the three that get any credit, respect or his due at all. The other two still are catching strays. Jan Blakovic is like, it looks silly, but it works. It's like, Jan! <laughs> I like you know, that. Time where we don't say it looks silly anymore, you know? It's like, I, I liked that a lot, actually, because even in, like, the post-fight presser with Dana White, the MMA guru covered this uh, very well, very, very well. I highly suggest you watch this video. But not a single question of, wow, like, Sean Strickland did amazing tonight. Everything was, Izzy was flat, bad night at the office, First question that rolls over is, did, did Izzy seem a little flat out there? And and the guru said it best. He said he looked the same as he did in every fight. If you watch him fight Jared Cannonier, watch him fight Yoel Romero, sit there dancing on the outside. Oh, and plays Brad Devores. I mean, it, he looks he's looking <clears throat> like that in a lot of fights. Guys. He's bad. He's bad. And I said, once I saw the titty was there, I was like, guys, we got to <laughs> we gotta take all the boats back from Sean Strickland, put him back onto New Zealand because – Titty Izzy is out there, and that means he is juicy, juicy, juicy. When you look into it. Who needs a strike on the record here is Mr. Dana White. And I, I hate to say it, but I mean, nobody was throwing more blocks, more excuses for Izzy than the commissioner himself, Dana White. I mean, what's your take on that? I, I think a strike needs to be issued here. I think something has to happen because – Dana White was never, uh, Izzy was never the darling of Dana White until he just knocked out Piera. And like the guru said earlier today, I watched the video. He was saying, you know, Izzy only looks good when he knocks people out. And he's he doesn't knock people out all the time. And when he doesn't knock them out, he looks bad. And it looks like he's getting exposed. And Sean Strickland did expose him. That Philly shell, he was getting in there. He was not getting touched. Uh, I was even watching the fight companion with uh, Joe Rogan recently. And he was talking about how, Sean Strickland spars more rounds than anybody in the UFC, but somehow takes less damage to the head, doesn't take as many headshots. His defense is astounding. And people in the Discord were saying defense doesn't win a fight. Uh, Have you ever watched a fucking boxing match in your life? Floyd Mayweather would sit there and dance on the outside the whole time, not get hit once, throw three punches and call it a night. But that's but Sean, what he does is what Floyd does, which is yeah. an encroaching Philly shell, which springs traps, right? Gets close, and, and which McGregor does this too in a lot of ways. They get close to the point where your opponent needs to advance. They allow the advance, and then they encroach again and encounter. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more sophistication to what they're doing in there. But Sean's great. He's amazing. The fight was great. He's competent, seasoned, experienced vet. He was the king of the cage. Champ. They should have stopped that fight in the first round. They should have stopped it. Yeah, Mark Notso Goodard. Uh, no, stopped no. he stopped it. But he stopped many fights before that were on their feet. He stopped Izzy on the feet. The same ref stopped. Well, those wouldn't have been good stops either. You don't think they're 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 What does everybody want from a ref, an umpire, and official? Nothing but consistency. All we want exactly. is consistency. We want to know the rules that you're going to. No, no. You I don't want the right call. No, and you got DC. You got DC sitting here like, oh, and Mark. He didn't even. He didn't even. Uh, attempt to get in there he didn't even look like he was about to go in there at any point it's like 
yeah, obviously, this is the same guy who robbed Colby Covington of a fight, who who got got Colby Covington stopped in two seconds when he's still fighting for a takedown. Paul Goddard brings a lot of his personal opinions into that cage with him. He is unable to distinguish. Uh, and you know what? And this is something that I believe. What I just said right there is something that I believed until I went back and watched Colby versus Kamaru 2 again. And I was like, you know what? If Mark really wanted to screw Colby, he could have done it a lot of different times. He stopped the action a lot and didn't take a point away from Colby. That would have been one way that he could have screwed him. Um, but then when you see that stoppage, you go, ah, you kind of did stop it a little early. But then it's like, well, if you really hated Colby, you would have let him fucking get killed in there. So then, you know, so then it's like, ah, kind of just proves my point. But then when you see Herb Dean in the fight with Blood Diamond and uh, what's his name, right? You see a lot of dirty tricks in that fight, right? Herb Dean, king of the dirty tricks. What he likes to do is, Get at an angle where he can't see a foul. <laughs> you know what That's I mean? Yeah, so, so he's so in what world? And I wish I had the picture. I, I'm gonna for the next episode. Remind me, everybody in the comments, to do this. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna bring the fight up again. I'm gonna pause it, and I'm gonna show you the angle, and I'm gonna show you what Herb Dean was doing and where he had positioned himself. And now this isn't during a time when they are two fighters moving independently, you know, Michelle Pereira and Chaos Williams flailing around and, and throwing wheel kicks and shit. No, this is a time when they're together, pressed up against the cage, and, uh, you know what I mean, like, not moving at all. And he has now choice to be wherever he wants to be. But where he is is at an angle where he's literally craning his neck and doing this to see around, to see around one of the fighters to, to see after the, the need of the – Near the uh, groin was protested. He's like doing this, right? And then it's like Herb Dean is just very inconsistent, but he's smart enough and seasoned enough to know exactly how to to play. You know, mm -hmm. he's politician. And, and Herb Dean, like Mark Goddard, will do. They will. They will try their best to influence the match, unless they can't do it uh, sneakily. If you, as the fighter, don't do your part, like for example. Blood Diamond didn't do his part. He need what's his name in the groin multiple times. <laughs> and what 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 uh, what's his name did what Chuck Buffalo did is he protested verbally and made a big spectacle about it. Most guys wouldn't do that, and then Blood Blood Diamond would have gotten away with it. But because he was like literally looking Herb Dean in the eyes and was able to like do that in front of the crowd, it, it created a situation where Herb Dean, in order to save his own face, had to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? but right. he would have loved to take no point. He would have loved, you know what I mean, to do things. And sometimes it feels like what they're doing is to help the striker or the excitement of the fight, right? And whether that is, I believe it could just be mob mentality, gestalt principle, the whole crowd psychically impacting and imprinting into the mind of the subconscious of these refs that make them feel this kind of like, like they're a kid in class having to give a presentation and they get nervous. Like, oh, she's looking at me. I got to do something to make everybody happy. I That is fine. I, I'm, I'm, I know how dumb humans are. I believe that that is probably possible. It's when you think they're doing it for what they think they want, the UFC, or, you know, hey, I'm Herb Dean. Who am I more friendly with? Israel Adesanya and the city kickboxing team of all famous, rich, celebrity athletes, or Chuck Buffalo and his dickhead-ass corner making their debut who gives a fuck from, from who gives a fuckville. You know what I mean? I want to go in the back afterwards and have Dan Hooker and Izzy come up to me and go, Thank you so much. That was crazy. You, you know, he was he was stalling, and you separated them, and you you gave Blood Diamond a chance to show his amazing kickboxing that we've all been talking about. We appreciate that. Or you know, you're a good ref. You're a good ref. Like, like, like that's you got it. When you're a bet, when you're when you're a parasite, you got to take what you can get. You know what I mean? When you're a, bo a bottom feeder, that's what I meant to say. A bottom feeder. Refs are bottom feeders. You know what I mean? Of of the highest degree, they're bottom feeders. John McCarthy, you're a bottom feeder. <laughs> John McCarthy sucks. <laughs> I'll be the first to say it. Just because just because you came up with lame, dumb rules doesn't mean you're smart. I mean, if, if we <laughs> if if the state didn't collect taxes, how would John fucking McCarthy have ever put a cheeseburger in his fat mouth? Because like whether he's employed by as a cop going to riots in LA as a ref, I mean he's the state. He is the state, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I know he lives in Tennessee. He hates paying taxes, but he loves taking them. <laughs> why are cops cops are all like conservative libertarians who hate taxes it's like you wouldn't have a job bitch <laughs> you want private security for floyd mayweather no you want to fucking twirl your baton and tip your hat to the fucking lady and get the cat out of the tree you don't want to be working for floyd that seedy behavior but that's where you be where the money is 
Kidding. Yeah, so Which, nothing wrong with that. All right, everybody. So, so I mean, you brought it up, the, the, John. You, you brought it up with the chip. You hey. brought it up. Oh my God, Jesus Christ! Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, you brought up the Chuck Buffalo fight. How about that? How about that? Uh, after the fight speech, how about that? Well, one question. Honestly, I missed it. I saw you guys posted it in uh, our group chat. There, what? What exactly did he say? I missed it. Well, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna oh. say it, uh, but because it was I like that. But I'll play it. But I'll play it because I took a video of it. I'll play it. Well, if you can't say it, then don't play it. <laughs> if I play it, it's a quote. If I say uh, it, it's still a quote. But then it does have you, Dan. All right, listen. It's but here's the thing. Uh, he if, said the if, f if dash you, dash told, dash 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 word. <laughs> if you told me that those that that word would be said not once but twice. And oh wait, 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 and neither time by Sean Strickland. <laughs> <laughs> Who had that on their bingo card? <laughs> my Jesus, Manel Cop. He's from wherever he's from. Chuck Buffalo. He's from wherever he's from. Point is, neither of them are from Australia. And if Australia wants to get all delicate with their sensibilities over language, I demand they stop saying the c word that is very offensive to YouTube and Americans. So I don't want. Australians throwing around the C word all cheeky. Oh, you're so cheeky, Ty. You're so cute. Hey, Ty, you didn't look cute when you were face down, ass up, getting choked out, bitch. Tapping out either. And the Ezekiel it's- choke of all chokes. My gosh. Yeah, tapping. Tapping to a choke. Like, oh, I'll bang on with anybody. I'll bang on. Unless you're getting hit hard in the face or choked out, then you're going to tap out and you're going to quit and you're going to cry. It's like, Ty, to be the fighter that you are, Ty, you got to be able to take a beating and you got to be able to go out on your shield. Holly Holm didn't tap, Ty. Holly Holm's a, a woman. You're a man. You're a heavyweight. She weighs half your size. She didn't tap. So I'm just saying, I think that you shouldn't tap. I agree. I, I agree that he shouldn't have tapped. Um, but, you know, you mentioned it. That was it. disgusting that he tapped. That was disgusting. It that, was. that whole crowd should have booed him. And and he was having so, some minor successes during the fight. I feel like if he'd uh, kept on those leg kicks, he probably would have taken out Volkov with the leg kicks. It looked like they were starting to bother him. That that big tree. How do you take out a they, big by tree? By the way, they were not bothering him at all. <laughs> I just want to let you know. Like, I'm going to hop in here. Weren't bothering him at all. Russians are not affected by leg kicks. There's not been a single Russian in the history of mixed martial arts that has ever been affected by leg kicks. Russians and the Diaz brothers. They don't work on those two people. Sorry. <laughs> Doesn't work. So, oh, oh, real quick. I'm sorry. I just I had a little brain blast here. It's a little sidebar, a little shout out here. If you guys get a chance to see it on Peacock, Kurt Angle documentary. Guy won the Olympics with a broken neck. And by the way, he broke his neck four separate times, not in competition, but semi competition. If we're talking WWE doing athletic stunts. So that just came to my mind as far as an athlete going through the pain, fighting through it. Getting choked up by an Ezekiel choke versus wrestling in the Olympics with a broken neck and winning. So I just felt like that was a good segue there. Check it out. It's awesome. Dan, I just want to correct you. It's a broken freaking neck. Okay. Broken freaking neck. Don't forget. That neck was freaking broken, man. Yes. Dude, somewhere along the lines, when I was a child, my mother or grandmother told me that if you dive into a shallow pool, right, you could break your neck. Oh, yeah. And it, it was put into my head. And like, you know. I thought a broken neck, like they were like, you'll be paralyzed. You'll be in a wheelchair. You'll never walk again. So that was my knowledge of what a broken neck was for my whole life. Then I hear the story about Kurt Angle winning the Olympics with a broken neck. And I'm like, my mom's a liar. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, apparently you can break your neck and you can win an Olympic gold medal. So like, you can do the literal hardest thing in the world, which is to win a freestyle wrestling gold medal. And by the way, it wasn't like, oh, I have a broken neck. I have to win this one match. He went through the whole gauntlet. He went through the U.S. Open then the Olympic tournament. So that's, I don't even know how many matches. It was like over over five high, 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 highest level matches in wrestling. I want a quadriplegic to come out and be like, yeah, did he sever his spinal cord? Like, <laughs> I broke my neck? Because do that and then I'll be impressed. Because, yeah, it's not, you shouldn't be able to call them the same thing. At the end so of the a, a little bit of a spoiler alert here. During the documentary, his, his doctor who gave him the AOK was like, did he have a broken neck? Yes. But does he have a neck? Not really. I mean, have you seen the guy? He doesn't even have a neck. So I let him go. <laughs> great. Just so everybody knows, something we've been saying on this podcast for a long time, confirmed by a doctor. That right. if, you have, if you don't have a neck, you can't be choked. And if you don't have a neck, you, you, you are, have can't to break it. You can't break it. Exactly. can't so, break what's not there. 
Well, we have to break down Fazia versus Gamrat, but I don't feel like we've done the justice. No, we haven't done enough. We haven't done enough. And I, so I really want to get into – You mentioned – you mentioned. I want to get into the Shane Young fight first. Uh, all right. Ooh. First, I want to get into the real short king, which is Manel Kopp. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. Because you mentioned uh, Chuck Buffalo. Manel Kopp used the exact same word not five fights later. They're brothers in, in Christ. To, in regards to Kaikar Francis' whole team, yeah. right? And oh boy, that was the the best part of that was how he set it up. Comedic timing on Manel Kopp. Um, I mean, he he goes, hey, hey, and I'm gonna tell you something. None of your team is gonna do anything. You know why? <laughs> like, like the you know why? It was Coffin level pro wrestling. Like it was perfect. It was absolutely. And, and it should it showed that little fuck on the screen while he was saying it too, sticking his tongue out, being all. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, my yeah. gosh. Where did little... at least have the class and dignity not to do the haka when he knew he had shamed his entire team, family, and reputation by missing weight. He didn't do it. He walked up. And, Kai, you shamed your entire team, family, and reputation by not showing up to a fight, but then showing up because you were hurt, but then showing up that day. That's like calling out of work at the restaurant you work at and then going to eat at the restaurant that you're supposed to be waiting tables at. <laughs> That is and, and he's training. That's I hilarious. saw videos of him training during the event. It's the same again. It's the same thing. I mean, it's the, and do you know what would happen? You would, I mean, I don't even know that you would get served. I think they would just all kill you right then and there at the restaurant. I think they would break a glass, cut your throat, drag you in the back, put you in a garbage bag, put you in the trash, and that'd be that for you. Because people at restaurants have a little bit of, a little bit of pride, a little bit of uh, sense of self uh, important the right amount of pride and the right amount of methamphetamines in their system. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right amount, too much. Not, it, the right amount means the amount the doctor prescribed you. Most of them aren't prescribed at all, so <laughs> let's be real. they have uh, too much. I mean, like, no, it's like people who work at restaurants are much better than Kai Car France. Waiters and waitresses have more. They would, if they had to call out of work, they would fucking make up a lie and they would not be seen, not even on social media. Trust me. So it was bullshit, you know. He wanted to what what promote your next fight. Kyle, no one gives a fuck. You went you were in the 125 pound division. Middle cop is the first person in the history to get any sort of interest going in that division. And don't say Henry Cejudo. Because Henry Cejudo, everything he does is fabricated fake plastic. Everything Middle Cop does is organic, rich, raw, and real hemp. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway. But that Felipe Dos Santos guy was astounding he was really good um i think if, maybe if he got a full camp that fight may have gone a little differently but maybe Manel cop was just overlooking him a bit maybe he thought that it was going to be a much easier fight had but... an injury and he still beat the shit out of him and he was not going to take any crazy outlandish risks when he doesn't have to i mean he schooled the boy and the boy was in there too long i mean it's like these young guys are too dumb for their own good when you're 20 you're not gonna fucking just realize like yo i got a whole career ahead of me you know, I'm not going to fucking stay in here and take this shit, you know? He should have fucking found a way out of there, if, if you ask me. Like Ty to Ivasa. Like Ty. Like Ty. <laughs> he should have found a nice little gift-wrapped way out. Um, You know, because what Ty is doing is essentially what Paige Van Zant did, which is to use the UFC as a platform to be a social media influencer, which is fine, you know? It's fine. If you, if you don't want to fight anymore, that's fine, but don't waste my, don't waste my brother's money. People like <laughs> Alex... People like our good friend of the show, Clint, putting five units on Tai Tuivasa. Ooh, no. I don't know how much his unit is, but I mean, five? <laughs> he has had Gino, and I love Clint, and we're going to have him on the show very soon. Actually, he's going to come on the show very soon. But he has had that guy, Gino, who is all about being like super actuarial about your bet size and who. And. I mean, it's like that guy's in his contact list. And I feel like he's doing him a disservice when he makes these kind of bets. It's like Tai Tuivasa is a short, fat, alcoholic, social media <laughs> influencer at this point. And we all would have loved to see him win and do a shoey. But it's just, you got to look at the height. You got to look at the stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, you, gotta, you can't just be like, I like the guy, you know? Yeah. So I'm just saying, Clint's doing great this year. He's up 70 units. I'm not going to. I'm not, I'm not trying to pile on. I know people are, I'm just saying, Alex, you, Ty wasted your money. Ty wasted yeah. his money. You, you're my brother. Like he, you, but, let me just say this everybody. Alex is such a dumbass 
<laughs> you went four out of 12 last week. All right. I went nine out of 12. As many picks as I got wrong is about as many as Alex got right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Dan no, I, got, I went five out of 12. I have you for Mar- Miranda, Radke, Hapgrass, and Malarkey, dude. So you got one dog with Miranda, three favorites with Radke, Miranda, Hapgrass, Radke, and I had Jusse. Who? You Jusse. had Crosby. No, no. I, I, said, I, had, I, I had Crosby. Crosby. I had Dan Crosby. did. I said as tempting as uh, Crosby and Sydney. Uh, you switched. I, you no. both switched. We triple B certified. I Jusse. double switched. I double switched. I double switched. I switched to Crosby and I switched back. Bring the evidence to me then, but I'm not. I'm not buying it. Yeah, I'm not. Crosby. I'm not paying for the Patreon. Much like a lot our, of our, our original, our original, <laughs> our original triple B certified picks were Juicy A, Hapkaras, Malarkey, Jenkins, Olberg, and Cape. We would have went five out of six instead of one out of two. If we, if you guys just didn't switch, because all of those picks I still had, except Hopcross. All right, that's the one I did switch on. But that was after the weigh-ins. I mean, that was like some serious. That was a closer fight than people made it out to be. It was definitely oh, yeah. the night, even though it didn't get it. And I mean, it was a close fight. Quinones, Quinones, yeah. I mean, it was a close fight. And when I saw you the weigh-ins, very I mean, well. I was switch. The line was out of control. Sure, I picked Hopcross on the first show. I switched after the weigh-ins. So, but hey, if you were betting with our children, all picks, this tells me though is that. Um, the, the Hick Diaz, uh, it should be in the UFC and both of these guys shouldn't. That's all I know from this. Cause Who is if, Hick, if Diaz? Hick Diaz, um, fucking Jason Knight. If, if these guys are in the UFC going to a unanimous decision and Quinones comes in on last minute and, and gives Hapcrass the fight of his life in there, gives him a hard ass fight, then you gotta put, you gotta put, um, what's the dude's name? I just said it. Jason Knight. But listen, Jason I, Knight. You got to put Jason Knight in the UFC. He tapped this kid out in 30 not, seconds. Listen, I tried to do my – I tried to do enough favors for Jason Knight. I'm not <laughs> – you know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm, the, I, I, I'm literally remaining neutral on the whole Jason Knight topic because of my experience with Jason Knight's childhood friend and longtime manager during the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship event. That I, you, know, you know, So I'm, I'm trying to just – got nothing nice to say, say nothing at all kind of thing here. But let's be real. I did. I, Jason Knight would probably have fifty thousand dollars more in his bank account if, if uh, he, you know, <laughs> if, if he made if the right decision. Well, if things went well, if things went well, you know what I mean. But yeah, um, I was going to real- make a toilet fighting championship T-shirt and have it drop shipped online on e-commerce for him uh, after he beat that guy up in the bathroom. Remember that? Yeah, he beat yeah. the guy up in the bathroom. I was going to. Were you there? Fine. No. Oh, I thought that was at the fight. Yeah, that it went, went viral. It went viral. It got picked up on all the viral media. And I said, we got to capitalize yeah. on this. We got to fucking launch a t-shirt right now with this video. And, you know, they're just slow moving hicks down there. You know what I mean? That They don't, they don't, I, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not trying to get crazy or personal or anything, but I'm saying, I was in New York City. We move at a different pace. You know what I mean? You try explaining to some, where's he from? Uh, Tennessee, matter. maybe. I don't know. Okay. Just, my point is, they move at a much slower pace down there. Sometimes, one hundred percent. They don't know anything. About, they don't, don't know really. anything about a New York minute, Luke. You're living on New York minutes. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> on, uh, you all hand um, you checks. Bing, 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 Bing. I think that Shane Young. I looked at my girlfriend before the fight. Right, I said, I want very bad things to happen to this guy. <laughs> yeah, like she said, That's rude. Why? And I said, I, I gave her the whole story about the missing weight, all this, how he how he sticks his tongue out like a little. And we brought this up on the Patreon episode, but let me just show the audience right now. Go ahead. I'm, I'm listening, so I'm just going to pull the video. Yeah, how how everything about Shane Young. I hate everything about him. He's living off the coattails. You think you think the refs are bottom feeders? Shane Young's a bottom feeder just because he's at this gym. All of a sudden, he gets all these opportunities when, you know, Juicy A comes in and makes it look easy uh, coming out of that gym. And we had never heard his name before. But all we hear about is Shane Young – tough guy, tough, tough bloke. And, and he, he goes out there and he does the same thing. Well, actually he got choked out, which is commendable. Um, but when the fight was over, I, I, I turned to her. I said, that wasn't enough. I wanted this to go much worse for him. I wanted him. I, I wanted very bad, bad things to happen to him. I'm not going to say what I well, wanted look, to happen. We should to audience him. the reason. Yeah. Cause so Cheney on the fought. Uh, Mr. Highlight, Ludovic Klein on Ludovic Klein's debut, right? So Ludovic Klein coming in, bringing an audience with him, doing the thing, short notice, takes the fight to get an opportunity during a pandemic uh, so that Shane can have an opponent, a dance partner, somebody to do the fight with, right? He goes in there and on short notice, he does what everybody does to Shane Young, which is he beats him and knocks him out and finishes him. 
And after that night, Israel won his little match and said to Dana this. <coughs> Eighty percent. They don't give up. So, you, you hear now, Shane Young, how Izzy thinks about you. He thinks you're a bitch. And Kai Kara, when Izzy called uh, Manel Cop the M word, you hear now what, how, short people, you, you hear now what, how, you hear how Izzy thinks about short people, Kai, because you're shorter than Manel Cop. And he was trying to big man Manel and he called him shorty and you know, the, the M word. He, he, he was really insulting Manel Cop and trying to act like his height made him better than Manel, right? Well, Kai, that's how Israel thinks about you, right? That's how, <laughs> when you're not around, if anybody else like ever wanted, for example, Kai, let's say you became the 125 uh, pound champ and started making all this pay-per-view money and making a lot of money. And then you became, as Israel's not the champ now, more popular than Israel. It's never going to happen. Don't worry. But, <laughs> did, and somebody else said to Israel, like something and Izzy started getting jealous. He would just use the fact that you're short. He'd be like, well, yeah, he's short. Or if you guys wanted the same girl, he would say to the girl, like, well, listen, he's short and I'm tall. So Izzy doesn't like short people. That's what's been revealed. He also doesn't like people who miss weight. And he wanted Shane Young's opponent to be fined 80% of his purse. So what I think is Shane Young should be fined 80% of his purse. Um, and he's not, it's going to be bad because he's not getting his win bonus. He's getting cut from the UFC. So his last paycheck from the UFC, he's going to get 20%. He gets 10% of that 20% to his manager. So he's getting 18%. He's going to probably pay taxes, a ton of taxes in Australia. Going to so, so we're talking 9% for Shane Young now. Izzy, thanks, buddy. You looked out for your friend, and you made the new policy, and uh, you're, you're just man, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, and the, the EA Sports cover athlete curse lives on again, and I think it's going to live on again tonight with one – Josh Allen. Josh Allen fucking sucks. I, I've been I've been chanting from the rooftops since he got into the league. He stinks. Uh, he's on the cover of Madden. He's going to throw two interceptions tonight. Um, besides that, Israel Adesanya on the cover of the new UFC game. Valentina Shevchenko on the cover of the new UFC game. Uh, and, and Volk. So I don't know how they got Volkanovski on, to sign up for this. He seems like a smart, savvy guy. Um, but... Maybe Volk's going to lose his next fight. I don't think so. I don't think he's as bad as Israel Adesanya. I think he's way more well-rounded, not one-dimensional. He's actually good at fighting. Um, but the EA sports, especially the UFC game, lives on. Because you think about it, Forrest Griffin on the cover of one gets knocked out. Brock Lesnar on the cover of one gets knocked out. Ronda Rousey, Conor McGregor on the cover. They both get finished that year. Ronda Rousey with the head kick. Nate Diaz chokes out Conor McGregor. Uh, the latest one, I believe, was Israel Adesanya and Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal, jobless. <laughs> Nothing to do anymore. Now he's putting on bare-knuckle MMA fights. Nice. But Israel Adesanya loses to Potan. Granted, years later, and Jan Blachowicz, years later, th then the game comes out. And now a new game's coming out, and all of a sudden Israel Adesanya who should have been finished in the first round, who shouldn't have even showed up to the fight. He should have had enough brain capacity like Kai Kara Francis concussed ass brain to just not show up and, and stay in the crowd and have a good time with, with the lads. Um, uh, so just, you know, you say that you think Josh Allen's going to lose tonight. Yeah. Josh Allen, Josh Allen is the biggest fraud. Oh, wrong. Josh Allen sucks. <laughs> Wrong. Aaron Rodgers is a fraud. Aaron Rodgers is an old, rickety old man with gray hair. He's going to get put on a fucking – he's going to get taken out on a stretcher tonight by the fucking Buffs, dude. Buffalo's defense. You're going to take him, dude. And Dan, and Dan, hey, I, I, I know – Mr. Rogan's got a seat at the comedy mothership for him when he fucking he pulls it in a wheelchair after tonight because it's <laughs> <laughs> He's got oh the Joe Rogan curse on him. 
Aaron Rodgers has the Joe Rogan curse on him, and the man in the black hat is going to get you, Aaron. He's going to be in that audience looking at you, staring through that soul of yours. He's going to come for the soul. He's coming for the soul, Aaron. You know he is. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Um, guys, but but be- now now that we're talking football, the birds. No, uh, we're they, not talking football. Maybe the, the birds <laughs> might be frauds. The birds <laughs> might be frauds, guys. The birds might be frauds. That game. Oh my God, Alex! Future. Let me put this to rest right here, right now. Give me five seconds. Alex, five what every five seconds. Fan does every year, every game, every situation of every. Oh, you want to fire Suriani? You want to fire him? First I, game of the I, season. I like read, everybody. First game of the season. Always clunky for every team. Rainy day on the road. Still won the game. So listen, you t- if that same performance happens four weeks from now, we could have that discussion then. First I game know. of the season, all those conditions, no big deal. It's crazy because I was being the optimist yesterday. I was like, babe, don't worry about it. They're playing against the greatest coach to ever to ever touch a football field, and True. he had the most time to prepare for the Eagles. That's the only reason that game looked so messy. But True. the offense looked like dick, dude. The offense looked terrible. It was pouring but- rain. Bro, the fucking Giants are the pathetic team we should be talking about. They <laughs> nothing. Absolute blowout. Two defensive touchdowns within the first five minutes of the game. I mean, at home. At home on 9 11 weekend. And it's like, oh, yeah. by the way, I just got this notification on my phone. This is from ESPN Sports Center. It says, DraftKings issues apology after 9 11 theme betting. <laughs> oh, my God. You never How forget you that? Was, was that what that was going No, I like. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook apologizes for September 11th themed betting promotion. <laughs> Don't apologize. <laughs> who who, who like, ran that? NFL. Was that Adesanya? Was that his bet? <laughs> yeah. The NFL. The NFL should have to apologize. They pay. They make the New York Jets play on 9/11. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You, you can't make this shit up. Uh, so, you know, I think the Giants are a pathetic franchise. Uh, they're not mighty whatsoever. Their quarterback looks like Mark Norman. They probably would have done better with Mark Norman in there. Uh, mm-hmm. Terrible, terrible team, terrible franchise. I texted my one Giants friend. I said, hey, because uh, I had a bet, a parlay, and it was uh, ending with the Giants as underdogs. And it said, uh, 250 bucks, I stood to win. I texted him. I go, hey, uh, what, what do we think? What do you think? I want to cash out, but I want to wait until the game's going a little bit and then cash out. He goes, we're not getting blown out. It's going to be close no matter what. <laughs> All right. There wasn't a moment of that game where you weren't getting blown out. Your old back was blown out. You swallowed the whole class, spit out the kids. All right, let's move on. <laughs> all right. Um, Chepe Mariscal. We got, all. we got through it all. Chepe, we're not talking about that. Ulberg, Pedro, um, who cares? Who cares? Cape, he's the man. We love him. Heal up quick, champ. You're my true king. Austin Lane, my big stinker, my big bet. Completely that sucked. Imploded. Yeah, that stunk. Sucked. Stunk. But I. But honestly, the Miranda win offset the lane bet. So that was pretty much a push break even situation between the two of them. And then Strickland, the parlay that won for me was Cape, Volkov, and Strickland. Um, just rebuilt $100 bet to pay 11 hundo. Finished night with 1100 bucks. Uh, clean, neat, and even. Um, aside from you know, little, little uh, things that went awry. But Chepe Mariscal should have been disqualified. I- I'm just going to say that because. There was a verbal tap. He still punched him after. You, sh- you should be disqualified for not getting a single pick right in the main card. You should be disqualified for, <laughs> for getting. Hey, I want a ton of money on Sean Strickland. Jenkins, I don't care. Eugene, Turcali, Lane, Dos Santos, Tuvasa, Izzy. Seven fights in a row wrong. I, I don't even I, – I couldn't care less. I came out with more money than I walked in with, and I, I took your philosophy. You say you say to me all the time, you don't lose some nights – no, 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 not that one. You say you lose some nights because you don't you don't refuse to lose. You lose a bunch of money and then you're like, ah, whatever. Next weekend we'll get him next weekend. I listened to Luke. I said, all right, what am I gonna do here? I, I'm down hundreds of dollars right now. The only logical thing to do is put hundreds of dollars on Sean Strickland to to make up <laughs> to make up for it. And I ended up get, coming out in the green. And I, I only changed my pick to Izzy to put the Maluk on Miz, Izzy. I knew that that would do that. So let the record show. Well, I, I, ago. I fade myself here and there, too. I, I do. I, I In terms of, like, uh, I had that bet with Gabriel Miranda, and uh, I cashed one of them out uh, before the before the fight started because I was like, this is $250 on Gabriel Miranda. This is a little silly. So I cashed the $100 bet out. I left $150 in on Gabriel Miranda. But I beat the line, so they were offering me 111 on a hundred dollar bet, and I was like, I'm gonna feel pretty dumb if uh, Shane Young goes out there and performs. But I was like, but 
if I cash this out, Miranda will win and he'll win easily. <laughs> That's literally what I thought in my head. I was like, let's just jinx ourselves here. I was like, let's yeah. just jinx ourselves to make it easy, you know? And I, I, I rolled through the first five fights feeling hotter than ever. And I'm like, oh, Jack Jenkins, my lock, my lock of the night, triple P certified guy. Oh, <laughs> wait, a guy that I have on a bunch of parlay is coming up, breaks his fucking arm. Can't believe it. Bro. <laughs> it's oh terrible. Goodness. I went five straight fights on my perfect parlay. I had a 75 cent bet that would win $2,000. <laughs> and I was like, sick. Let's let, let, let the good times roll on. And then Jack Jenkins. I've never made a bet that low. And I would ever would. If I can bet 75 cents to win 2000, I'd be mad at myself if I didn't bet $3 to win 8,000, <laughs> you know, right. that's, that's a good point. Actually, <laughs> I'd, be upset. I'd be like, I'd be like, wow, I like, can't even show that bet to anybody because I'll be like, well, yeah, you had no faith in that. That's why you only bet 75 cents. Like, it's not like, no, Luke, team. it's what you, you know? do. You, you, when it's 12 fights, you put the smallest bet on it. When it, when, yeah, the smallest lose. bet that I do is not 75 cents. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> the smallest bet. Yeah. I just had an extra 75 cents in my account. Okay. I, I wanted, I wanted a clean number. When I have 75 cents in my account, I put more in. <laughs> it's two seconds, two, 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 two buttons. Boop, boop. No, I had like two hundred and thirty-five dollars and seventy-five cents, uh, and so I just put the seventy-five cents on something to make it a round number. This guy's a weirdo, everybody. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, nine out of twelve. Alex went four out of twelve. Dan went seven out of twelve. Triple five out of twelve. Two. Uh, we'll see about that. Um, overall <laughs> records for the year. I lead the way. One hundred and thirty-three picks out of two hundred and three given in year four. Sixty-five point five percent accurate. Dan is in second place, 121 correct out of 203 given. Not 50, bad, not bad. You're you're actually you're nipping at my heels, so to speak. It just you know it would take me getting none correct in next week's event and you getting all of them correct in next week's event, and you'd be behind me by one point. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Dan though is at 59.6 percent, which you know my my standard is 60 percent. You got to be finishing the year 60% accurate. Alex is like 58. Dan's like 60 if you round up but for both of them. But Joe will be certified picks lead the way. 69 correct out of 100 exactly given in year four. We finished year three uh, 70% accurate. Joe will be certified picks, which is outstanding. Now, those are the picks all three of us agree on that we all sync up on. We went five out of six if you go with the original podcast that we put out for free on YouTube. But the amended, the addendum, the updated, the fine tooth comb picks, we did a lot of switching and it left us with only Malarkey and Jenkins left. So let's just say our comb wasn't too fine this week. Well, no, I mean it was fine. It was too fine. It was it was too fine. We it was so fine we scrubbed up all the correct picks too. And we're left <laughs> so um 69 out of hundred, outstanding in year four, especially when you consider that over 500 picks into year five, or sorry, year three, we finished at 70% accuracy over an entire year of triple B certified picks. Now here in year four, we have not only maintained that 69, 70% accuracy, but um, well, no, that, not only that, only that we've maintained it. Um, okay. So hundred picks in great sample size. Um, let's move on to Fazee versus Gamrot. Two of the guys that we all bought would be dark horses. Um, you know, the mysterious strangers coming in, winning and, uh, over their last five, they both have a common a common theme, which is one blemish uh, from an opponent that we kind of, at least if you're me, thought they were going to walk right through. Um, Mateus Gamrod, of course, went up against uh, the man Benel Dariush 10 months ago. I'll remember that. We were in the Poconos. I remember that fight very well. We were in the Poconos for Dan's birthday, his 30th birthday weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, he's taken on Havel Faziv, who, again, you know, I thought he was going to put Justin, Faz- Justin Gaethje. I thought he was going to put him in a fucking wheelchair. Um I thought he was going to send him out on the stretcher. I thought he was going to knock him out ahead. Fazeev by knockout. Fazeev, you know, by finish. Fazeev, money line. And he lost. And not only did he lose, he lost embarrassingly. I mean, if I'm Fazeev, I should be ashamed. You had a striking match against a wrestler. What is it you're doing out there in Thailand? It's not Muay Thai. If it must be what that other Russian fighter was doing. Or worse. But <laughs> that's a perfect segue, Alex. I want to share this. Uh, share my screen. This is what a lot of these guys are doing out here in Thailand, everybody. Um, <laughs> and, it, and a lot of them, the ones who aren't doing this, they're doing a lot worse. Um, so look at this. Russian MMA fighter arrested for kidnap, torture, extortion, and Phuket. So basically all that really means is he kidnapped the guy, tied him up, beat him up, robbed him. 
Now, you're probably thinking, like, okay, so an MMA fighter, a guy who's in the UFC, like, he has so much to lose. Why would you rob somebody for their watch in uh, in Thailand? Well, I thought that, too. So here's the guy. is He's bound. He's gagged. You know, he was in his bathing suit, whatever. Like, they, they fucked him up a little bit. Not bad. I think this was mostly from him shrimping his way. The contusion was on his shoulder. That looks like it was probably from him shrimping his way uh, out of the room. But they discovered him here. See, this is closed circuit TV cams. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. I mean, uh, it's not not funny, but uh, <laughs> you know, I can't read. I, I can't read this language. It makes me really upset when I see stuff like this. I'm like, whoa! Like, I'm like, I don't know shit about this language. Like, I, I'm, I can't. I can see Rolex, Daytona. <laughs> I can make that out. But to be honest with you guys, I'm like, when I see this, it makes me so nervous. I'm like, what am I gonna do? I don't have enough time to learn this. Uh, <laughs> So you, you start to wonder, like, he had so much to lose. But then you see what he stole, and you go, okay, I get it. Like, Oh, yeah, shit. He stole uh, – the, the watches you steal are more important, you know. Like he, st he stole a, a Rolex Daytona, a Patek Philippe Nautilus. It's like $3 million watch, $2 million watch. So it's like, yeah, I mean, any of us would have done the fucking same thing, right? Uh, well, that's their funny money. It's probably like a hundred grand. No, it was uh, about – I think that was – either okay so let's say i'm just saying like regardless I, not like if you're an mma fighter and you're in the ufc and you're famous and you have like a path to life success it doesn't really make sense to just be randomly mugging strangers but if you know somebody has hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry and you want that jewelry it makes more sense to think that he would do that i'm like okay well at least the the crime was worth the the risk was worth the reward you know what I mean? he's it's a jewelry making, connoisseur he just he just could not live without that jewelry yeah, it's like he's making he's making it wasn't about the money. An Italian guy, he's making enough more, more money than he's going to make in his UFC career. So it's Andrew like, Tate just exited the chat because you know you say you say how uh, this guy has everything going for him. He's in the UFC. Why would he commit these crimes? Which is <laughs> Andrew Tate's whole argument about every crime that he's been accused of thus far. So he's sitting there sweating his ass off. He's like, "Fuck, another professional fighter who has a good record, <laughs> who has everything going for him." <laughs> Just decided to break laws and extort somebody for all. So he doesn't have everything. He doesn't have everything go with him. He's making six and six to fight in the UFC. True. So, it's, but but like you know, but if, if if like when you hear oh he mugged a guy for a watch, it reeks of desperation. Like you're just randomly looking for the first guy you see and trying to take what he's got, and maybe you don't even know what he's got. That reeks of desperation. Orchestrating a year long criminal plot to steal hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry from some punk is less desperate, and I can. I, I don't care as much. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I'm not puzzled by it. I'm not like, why would you do that? I'm like, no, I get it. He's a hustler. He's... But the funniest part of this is if you read the comments on that article, um, it's a bunch of people from Thailand. And I guess they're having a problem with all this MMA invasion, especially from the Russians. Uh, it says the comment, because anecdotally, the comments, oh, I thought there were absolutely no Russian gangsters around here. Immigration officers are totally sure, as always. What the fuck? And police are all clean and transparent, as we know, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hold on, it gets better. Some other guy. Absolute scumbag. Sadly, so many of those martial arts schools are popping up on Phuket. And sadly, more than just a few of those sportsmen are quite dodgy. Hopefully, they will get the Kazakhs, too. <laughs> what the fuck? And then he says, he goes, well, well, well. It'll be interesting to read what the fantastic good RTP have to say about this. Uh, I don't know what RTP means. But then, hold on, one last thing. He says, it can't be true. We had an article the other day saying how cute and cuddly the Russians are and not involved in crime here. You don't mean to tell me they were wrong, do you? These are all Thailand people who apparently are having a problem. The only cute and cuddly Russian is from Georgia, and his name is Marab Devashvili. He looks like an Ewok from Star Wars. All right. Let's move on. Fazee versus Gamrat, like we said, two disappointments, but they have rebounded well. Um, Gamrat with a split decision win over Jalen Turner, not impressed. And um, this will be Fazeev's attempt to bounce back. I kind of like Fazeev here. Um, you know, I think if you can't take Benel Dariush down and you can't outstrike Benel Dariush, you ain't outstriking or taking down Fazeev. So I'm going Fazeev. What do you guys think? Yeah, I uh, I completely agree with that. Um, Fazeev, I can give a bit of a pass with the Gaethje fight. Still respect him. Still respect the striking. Uh, still respect him athletically. 
over the course of five rounds, do I think that Gamera is going to get him down? Maybe once or twice, but I, I don't think enough that you know there's going to be all that much control time that he's actually winning a full round, um, you know, up to three times. I, I think Fazeev is going to land way more damage. That's for damn sure. Um, so, being that this is going to stay on the feet for the most part, and that the more damaging shots are coming from Fazeev, uh, I'm pretty confident in this pick. Uh, let me take a look at the odds. Do you know the odds on the fight, Alex? He has to be a favorite now. I don't think the odds are out yet. Um, He's got to be like a minus 200. That sounds about right to me. Fazeev? Yeah. I mean, yeah, the odds are commonly where my betting lies on the main event, just because I like to top it off. On bestplayedodds.com, DraftKings has Gamrod as a plus 114 underdog. I'm seeing is high. The highest I'm seeing on best fight odds is FanDuel has Fazeev at minus 158. DraftKings has him at minus 135. So oh, wow, good. You, called, you called it correct. You called it correct. But at this, if you if you think he should be minus 200 and they're giving you minus 135, yeah, it seems like you're grabbing Fazeev. So I like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, commonly I like to take the favorite on the last fight of the night just so I have a great hedge out opportunity if one of my parlays sees the light of day that far um but the stylistic matchup here is fairly interesting i think that gamrot will be able to take fazeev down um if you remember that rafael dos Anjos fight fazeev was losing that entire fight until he got the knockout in my opinion if that went to the judges scorecards he lost that fight i believe it was three to one going into the fifth round when dos Anjos got knocked out gamrot doesn't have the miles on him that uh, Dos Anjos does. And, you know, he, he beat Jalen Turner. Um, it's been a decision. Dan Hooker also beat Jalen Turner. Yeah, Dan Hooker sucks too. Um, I also feel like the wrestling style is different from Gamera to RDA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, d- definitely, definitely. RDA pressures you up against the cage, gets the takedown when it's there. Um, you guys are you're, you're you're intriguing me though. I just think I guess over five rounds, mm-hmm. I don't know that Gamrod is gonna have a gas tank because he gassed against he Benil, right? Against Sarukian though. So, see, that's the key actually. I think the Gamrod Sarukian fight might be the key, and he didn't get finished by Benil. You know, um, he gassed though. Dropped. He gassed he though dropped. hard. He got he dropped. Gassed. That's and gassed. And, gassed. and that was a three round fight. Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, it's as close as the line makes it out to be because they both have good attributes in different areas. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, who's are going? Who is go? Is Gamrot going to be able to? Because I don't think it's going to be a five round striking affair where Gamrot wins. That's the one area I think would be crazy. But then again, I yeah. didn't think that it would be a fucking striking match where Justin Gaethje won. Justin mm-hmm. Gaethje's a wrestler. This is Fazeev needs to get. His, <laughs> if I if I if Fazeev were in this room right now, I'd bend him over my knee and I'd spank his butt and I'd say, "You're a bad, bad." bad striker and a bad boy because you know what you're doing in thailand it's not striking it's not training it must be something else <laughs> I mean, what i mean everybody i'm not gonna say it but it's what i'd be doing in thailand and it's not training muay thai he's dropping lbs and we're not talking about the pounds getting ready for the fights boys <laughs> and when you look into it i'm just saying Thailand, great place, never been there. But <laughs> but I'm just saying, Fazeev went in there against a Division One All-American wrestler, and the All-American wrestler put on a striking clinic on your dumb fucking face for three rounds, and you lost me a ton of money. Because why? You were scared? I don't know. What was it? What was the what? – tell me. Tell me! Justin Gaethje fought a one-armed man once. Nick Newell looked better than you did, Fazeev. <laughs> that is true. Nick Newell's is true. Nick Newell is yeah, he underrated. Felt better, he felt better than Fazeev. Nick a Newell deserves a lot better. more credit than he des- than he got. Like if you're making a, a movie, I know about- I'm using it to insult Fazeev, but it's yeah. only because I know what kind of man Fazeev is, and that will insult him. I don't think it's an insult to say Nick Newell did better than somebody. I think Fazeev thinks it's an insult. That's why I'm Nick. If, Nick, if, Nick, if they're Nick, making a movie, that's why I'm saying it. It's if not. They're making person. movies about. Deaf Purdue wrestlers, Matt Hamill, like you got to uh, make Immaculata. Huh? I thought he went to Immaculata. I thought he went to Purdue, but maybe he, did. he might have went to Purdue. He might have went to Immaculata. I think he went to Gallaudet. Gallaudet. 
That's what I meant to say. Immaculata is not even the same thing at all. Galliadet, uh, why? Did I, <laughs> I I meant to say Galliadet, but it's like Immaculata and Galliadet have nothing in common except they both sound kind of like they're ball. like yeah, it's like the same it language. It's like ball ball room. Room. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like ballroom. It, it feels like I should be wearing white gloves. <laughs> Galliadet, you know. Gal- it was Purdue. Gal- it was Gal- Purdue. Gal- I just Gal- looked it up. Coincidence? I think not. Um, I I just looked it up. It was Purdue. But if you're making movies about Matt Hamill. Um, just because he's deaf, like <laughs> you should be oh, making, but you should be making a, a like that doesn't necessarily. Why is Matt Hamill catching a stray bullet? No, I, I love Matt Hamill. The, the only man, man to Hamill. defeat the great. The only one to fell the great one. Okay, he's the only one to fell the great one. There's a lot of ways you can win a fight. Okay, disqualification's one of them. You got yeah. you got submission, you got knockout, you got decision, and then you got a fourth one. It's called disqualification. All the tools are available to win a fight. And you know what? Matt one. Hamill knew the rules and John didn't. Simple as that. That's one of the things you need to know. You know, kind of like having your gloves, having your mouthpiece. Uh, cutting <laughs> cutting your, your toenails. Whoa, we both said the same thing. That's crazy. We both <laughs> went to the same third thing. That's nuts. So All I'm saying is... Without, but no, but you know why? Because Dan does jujitsu now and they probably had to tell him. They probably had not, to tell no, him. no, 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 no. <laughs> no <he definitely laughs> some cool I've been biting my nails my whole life. They don't have to tell me that. But you're not. Your I, got, I got nubs. Your toenails, your toenails are just as dangerous in jujitsu. You don't want to catch them. A I understand. I understand. You know, you're using your. You're, you're a big uh, monkey guard fan, as you were saying last week. What was it you were saying you like? Spider guard. guard and Alex. I, I appreciate the post that you sent me. That was that was some badass shit right there. Thanks. I got a lot more where that camp comes from. I got a whole highlight video. I, I'll have to send it over to you, just in case. Just in case you're um, getting a Need little some bit inspo. more. Yeah, just in, just in case you get a little bit more confident about a wrestling match that will never happen because we will never reach fifty subscribers. Listen, let me. Alex. <laughs> but all I was saying was, Nick Newell has a, a disability that affects how you fight. He's missing his whole forearm, where being deaf doesn't really like impact how you fight. It might with coaching, but if you get a good signer out there and you can just take a little peek real quick. You're probably in good shape, but Nick dude, Newell, dude, dude, being deaf does impact. Not as much as not having an arm, <laughs> like okay. Jesus. Semantics. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> For an hour in, and we only broken down one of these eleven fights. It's supposed to be a quick episode. We got Monday Night Football. Uh, there's a lot we have to get to, so we're gonna. I mean, I don't even know what did you guys pick. I, I picked Fazeev, but. I'm going to take Gamrat. Take it to Zeev. I'm going to be the contrarian here. I, as much as I'd love to take the favor, just so I have a good hedge opportunity, I think that he is very one-dimensional, and I think the Gamrat will be able to take him down and at least be able to hold him up against the cage and close that distance. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think the Gamrat has a, a bigger reach, a bigger height, and uh, yeah, he's taller. Not as long of arms, but taller. Nonetheless, he's got some legendary Polish power in there. He's a bit of a gamer. I think he's gonna I think he's gonna ace this game like I did Starfield. Well, you know, he does have ten more fights, uh ten more wins. So Gamrot the gamer. We'll see what we'll see. We'll see. You know, as the fight gets closer, maybe some more information will reveal itself, make this one a little bit of an easier pick. I wanna hear, you know, what they've both done. And I'm going to call the split decision against Turner a loss. I mean, so I want to hear what they've both done. But Turner's an awkward fight. He's long, you know what I mean? He's a striker, but he's athletic, and he, he poses a weird game. So I just don't know that it's like – you kind of have to put him on an island by himself. And it's like, yeah, you got through him in a split decision. Okay, well, we move on. Let's just not think about that one. But it's not like he's going to fight another guy with the attributes of Allen Turner in the division. Who's he going to fight? Is there a lot of sign you? That, that, that's, <laughs> like that, that's who has the attributes of fucking John Turner. He's going to go up and fight Israel Adesanya. Like, anyway, um, I'm going to pee real quick, but Bryce Mitchell versus Danny Gay should be good. Ooh, man. I am uh, a little split on this. I'm leaning Danny Gay, and I don't want to, especially with Mitchell coming off of a loss. I feel like he's bound, you know, he's a tremendously good fighter. For him to lose twice in a row, it just doesn't seem correct. But again, uh, Ige, and what was his last fight? I remember his last fight was against someone that I didn't Nate want. Nate Landwehr. Nate Landwehr, yeah. That was You're a fight big Nate Train guy. Obviously, yeah, right? So I'm a big Nate the Train guy. Uh, I wanted 
him to win real bad, but I had to be honest about the stylistic matchup, but I feel like it's the same thing here. Um, Ige is not going to gas out. I think Ige has really good balance. He's got that Hawaiian balance going on. He's been surfing since he was a fetus. You know, he's, it's going to be very hard to take him down. He's got way better boxing ability than Bryce Mitchell. <laughs> and again, it's going to come down to the damage. Maybe one round will be won by Mitchell, probably, uh, you know, the first or so, just really redlining it, getting him, you know, getting control, but not really doing much with it. I feel like rounds two and three, Ige is going to be landing you know, twice the amount of shots. So uh, it's with a heavy heart that I'm going to pick Dan Ige here. He's just killing off all my darlings. Hate to say it. And sometimes you have to kill your darlings. That's a common theme on this show. We all love Bryce Mitchell. We love Arkansas. We love everything about Bryce Mitchell, right? And I I take no pleasure in saying this, but Dan Ige is going to put on a master class against Bryce Mitchell. I don't think Bryce Mitchell sees the last bell of a fight. I don't think Bryce Mitchell wins a round. I don't think he wins a minute of this fight. Danny mm. Gay, like you said, great balance, good wrestling defense. A guy who has as good a striking as him who's been in the UFC for this long, and he's only 32 years old, guys. You would think he's a little bit older. He just turned 32 last month. So looking at that, I just feel like he's going to be able to stay on his feet. He's fought way better wrestlers. Bryce Mitchell doesn't necessarily have the best wrestling he has good jujitsu, great jujitsu, great um, submissions, great submission threat. But I just don't think this skinny boy is going to be able to take down Dan Ige. Like Dan Ige is thick, sturdy, short. Luke knows more than anybody. Short wrestlers are the hardest to take down because they have a lower center of gravity. It's harder to reach their legs. They're, they're you know. It's it sucks wrestling a short guy. Yeah, gravity's a myth. Bryce Mitchell will tell you that. Um, gravity. <laughs> it's just a theory. It's just a theory. And uh, that being said, Bryce Mitchell is deeply connected with Master Eddie Bravo. Um, he's a tenth planet practitioner, as far as like his his. his what do we say about tenth planet practitioners that they suck? Well, hold on. He has one of the few, one of the three twisters in the UFC. If you can do a twister in the UFC, you're you're you don't suck. Um, but I get what you're saying. A lot of these 10th Planet nut jobs are just that. They're fucking nuts. They're nut jobs. And when you look into it. That being said, Eddie Bravo is not one. Bryce Mitchell's not one. They're both bereft and privy to a lot of information that more Americans should be. Direct energy weapons. You need to get that in your vocabulary. Uh, you need to Google <laughs> Sean Ryan, Antarctica, direct energy weapons, something like that. Check this interview out. It's a guy who had top clearance in Antarctica. And he was able to uh, blow the whistle on some serious business that might have impacted, um, you know, a place where Danny Gay is deeply connected to. I'm talking Hawaii. So Danny Gay being from Hawaii, Bryce Mitchell being a deep conspiracy theorist, I think Bryce is going to have a little bit of empathy for him. I mean, it's hard not to have empathy for Hawaii when you think that the uh, New World Order is conspiring to burn down their home in order to... It's see- happening over here too, Luke. We, we just had floods. Uh, people are... People are dying. Luckily, I'm high up enough in the yeah. mountains where I, I, it's not impacting. It's Johnstown all over again. And you think, right? You go, why? You know, I used to think. I used to wonder. I'm like, what? what is the angle with the climate change talk? Like, why is it so in my face? Why are they – why are, is, is one team pushing the need for me to be worried about climate change, right? I saw Day After Tomorrow when I was a kid got it but what what that movie kind of told me was like eh this is in the future but we need to think about our children and our descendants right and then i saw irobot and they said the future is now message received so (laughs) then i go okay lately though it all comes back day after tomorrow is like being hitting me in the face again greta thunberg right you get all these new people telling you about climate change you're like oh wow okay like we're still you so I said, I'm like, what is their angle? So then I I came to the conclusion. I was like, carbon tax. They just want to be able to tax the legacy players, like the oil barons and the car manufacturers. They want to tax them out of existence, usher in a new series of companies and people and legacies that will be the future of money making and baronism and and uh, you know, right, right. Like that, that makes sense. I was like, okay, yeah, th- I, I get that. That makes sense. Um, there's all these people who have oil and the oil is used to make all these things and used to burn and as fuel and coal and 
they want to get those people out and they want to bring the new people, the solar and the wind and the, they want to bring them in. Got it. Okay. I get the scam now. Cool. I'm on the stage. But now I'm thinking something else, right? Now I'm thinking, because every time one of these new natural disasters happens, they go, and you know, climate change, this is why, right? And I'm like, oh, wait. So they're trying to connect all of these things. And these are things like wildfires and things, you know, that are supposed to just kind of be like things that always occur and are part of the natural cycle of nature. But now they're like, oh, no. The, it's like they're, they're overplaying their hand, I feel. And this is going to probably get me killed. But I'm just saying, it feels like they're overplaying their hand. It feels like they're able to create natural disasters and therefore use them as a scapegoat for control. Um, and if that's what they're doing, it kind of makes the people who say that some of the, you know, I, I don't even want to. When you look into it. But what I'm going to say next is for the Patreon. I this can't. This might be a comb. <laughs> yeah. This might be the comb. This is for the comb club. I fucking say what I'm going to say next, they will come and fucking kill me. Um, but. Bryce Mitchell believes that Hawaii is being attacked, targeted, and burnt down by the government, essentially, or the New World Order conspiring Joe Biden. I don't know who he thinks is doing it. Soros, Biden, any of the main the main players, right? But Clinton, maybe. I don't know. Is Hillary involved? I don't know, Bryce. You tell me. You're from Arkansas. You're the one from Arkansas. His, his, uh, Bryce Mitchell's I think grandmother. His grandmother babysat Bill Clinton as a kid. So there's a lot of connections. Everything's connected. But Bryce is a flat earther. The flat earth is connected to the Antarctica Treaty. It's connected to you know Op Project Blue Beam. It's connected to direct energy weapons. Um, so I know Bryce probably is going to, when he daps Dan Ige up, watch their lips. He's probably going to be like, brother, I just want you to know that I think <laughs> terrible for a while. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to say that because I, I I genuinely believe he does. And <sighs> it's a roundabout way. Of that empathy is going to turn on him though, right? That empathy is going to, exactly that's what I'm trying to say, is that he's a soft-hearted Arkansonian and because he doesn't hate Dan Ige and has a lot of pride and respect for him, he won't be able to finish him. And Dan Ige is going to get the win. And like you guys said, it's going to be brutal, brutal and bad. And it's going to, uh, especially because you know why Bryce Mitchell's happy. He's got a farm and he's got a cute blonde girlfriend. You see his girlfriend? So cute. So funny. You better marry her, Bryce. Can't be on Tucker Carlson with an, uh, without being married. Okay. <laughs> if you're Mr. Tucker Carlson, get married. Uh, he probably is married. I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, Bryce is, Bryce is already won. Right, Bryce has already won. It's a problem. That's the problem. Guys like Darren Till, guys like Bryce Mitchell, they've already won. Never give a guy camo shorts. shorts. <laughs> Never give a guy his own shorts and pay these guys less and or maybe pay them more, right? Maybe pay them more because the money's out of the UFC. So they get they stay in the UFC in this little humdrum level so they can get the more money out of the UFC. And the ones who are really ambitious, no, I got to get the title. I got to get my brand deal. I got to sell my brand deal. That's the McGregor path. You get the fame. You get the company. For McGregor, it was proper 12. For Logan Paul, it's prime. For, let's think, Ryan Reynolds, it's the Mint Mobile. You know, you get – and it's like – by the way, don't ever talk to me about fucking – Welcome to Azkaban or whatever the fuck the show they have is called. What Nobody Brexit. here is a fan of that. Nobody's a fan of Welcome to Brex. What is it? Brexit. 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 <laughs> I'm going to say Welcome to Azka Azkaban. <laughs> I like that better. Don't talk to me about Welcome to Azkaban ever again. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and the other guy, I get it. They're adorable. They're the cutest things since they're the cutest. They're, they're so cute. But, you know, I, I personally, it makes, it makes me want to. I can't uh, save it for the Patreon, but it makes me want to. I, I can't say what I want to say. I uh, when I was on my honeymoon, it's hard and so bad that like when I, even if what, I said it like in any setting, Rumble, <laughs> YouTube, if, no matter what I said it on, it wouldn't be allowed. You would have legal. Now, if I said it out loud, they would be like, "That's illegal." You know what let I mean? Me, let yeah, me let me put this legal over. Implications rather than I have know, a pair of scissors. I YouTube. wanted to just. I can't even do what I wanted to. I, I was gonna pants a mine. I can't even. I can paint this over a little bit better. That's a little bit more uh, savory for YouTube. When I was on my honeymoon in Italy, there was these very annoying people from that town, whatever it's called. And uh, they were trying to express to uh, the waitress, the, the bartendress, who was giving them drinks. And they were getting really rowdy. They were like, yeah, we're from Azkaban or wherever. <laughs> right? and, and she was like, oh, like never heard of it. Sorry. And they're like, you know, like the show, blah, blah, blah. Whoa, and she was like, personality now. she was like, Still do not give a fuck, dude. <laughs> do not care. Like I don't care. About like, you guys are annoying. You're not fun. I don't like people from Wales or wherever it was. It's, it's hilarious. She's, She's like, like I, I don't give a shit about. I think it's Wales that that place is. 
She's like, I don't give a shit about Deadpool and Always Sunny meeting up to own a soccer team. What the fuck yeah, is yeah. this all about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was badass. Do, it was awesome. The only people who do are insufferable. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, the type of person who, like, like Robert Whittaker. Like, who's, like, the, who's, like, no, not even, like, the, the, the nexus point of, like, those two fan bases intertwining is, like, the most insufferable person that you could possibly imagine. <laughs> Like yeah. I can't even I, I can see them. I can see them in my face right in the here, as clear as as clear as the as the man in the black hat is to Aaron Rodgers every day when he wakes up in the morning. I can see the fan of um, you know, but we'll, we'll and talk speaking of Ryan Reynolds, he talks way too fast and way too Ryan Reynolds, he talks too fast, he talks too swarmy, he's a little I'm, swarmy. Done, I'm done with Ashton Kutcher too. How about that? Oh yeah, definitely all the mogul celebrities must fall. 2024. Oh, I, I am. I'm using their companies. I'm done. I'm pulling out. I'm, I'm unsubscribing from every company. Like I'm, I'm going to start pulling out of everything. Bill Gates owns Bud Light now. You see that? I was like, yes, dude. <laughs> Hilarious. It was almost like he was like, there's a certain type of person who's never going to drink Bud Light anymore. So let's just assume that if I buy it, like that person was already out and uh, I'm going to just hop, you know what I mean? Like Bill Gates owning Bud Light. He's going to put the backs in the Bud Light probably. Oh, dude, yeah, I'm off. He's a hundred million in. <laughs> oh, it would man. be good if you put the backs in the blood light for you two, though. You two love the backs. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and thank God you two are backs because the COVID is coming back. You hear it? It's making a comeback. Know, it's, like, it's, it's like a reunion tour. <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I might have a heart attack just to prevent Whoa, getting, well, getting the common cold. That. You be seen like the dickhead. <laughs> bringing it up. I don't want that for either of you. <laughs> I'll be. I think about that all the time. I feel so sorry. Don't but, worry. It only happens to super athletes like Bronny Jr. and Demar yeah, Hamlin. <laughs> never gonna push it that hard. <laughs> you guys are never gonna push it that hard. M me sitting you're good, in my you're good. You got a governor that's way ahead of where you're gonna be. Your governor's on 190 and your car goes 120. <laughs> and if it would have if it would have happened, it would have happened when Sean Strickland won and we had those two electric post fight interviews. <laughs> that would have been the thing to push me over. That's the most excitement I've had in years. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, this episode is never going to air. Let's move on. <laughs> Martina, Martina Marina Rodriguez versus Michelle Watterson Gomez. Uh, and make sure you say the Watterson. Um, just kidding. It's a Louis J. Gomez joke. And Watterson Gomez. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Louis it now. J. Gomez. Louis J. Gomez, Watterson Gomez, uh, the karate hottie, three-fight losing streak. Marina Rodriguez, two-fight losing streak, 36 versus 37. Gives a fuck about this fight. Let's move on. Let's. Should we just should we just tackle all the lady fights in a row right here, rapid fire? Let's do it. Well, no, because some of them could be good, but this one in particular is not, and they both stink. Yeah, Hannah Hannah Goldie versus Inuit yeah. is going to be a real fucking bar. It's going to be That is awesome. That's yeah. going to be a good fight. It's yeah. Oh, no. the, 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 this pick for me is Marina Rodriguez. That's all I'm going to say about it. She's taller. Um, she has longer reach, but they both stink. And uh, M Michelle Watterson has 11 losses. So I'm not going to pick somebody who's on a three-bet losing streak with 11 losses. They've told you what their plans are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Marina Rodriguez, definitely for the win here. Uh, her one weakness is the takedown. She's not going to be taken down by Michelle Watterson, Godinez, whatever her name is, uh, especially at this age and the stage in her career. So uh, Rodriguez for the win, 100%. Hopefully it's not too chalky of a line because you can never truly tell with these lady fights, but uh, pretty confident on this one. I hope all the Sims bring their money to the to the cashier and they say i want this old lady this old lady i want her to win i hope they do that i hope they push the line into waluigi's favor waluigi's gonna win this fight marina rodriguez waluigi lives on and and will come and ruin michelle waterson's life i'm a simp for her you know it, baby why well, I, I hope what you hope about the next fight uh because we have a guy in Andre Fialo who has underperformed to the highest level. I mean, a guy who is so talented at the right gym, in the right place, with the right age, the right attributes. I mean, holy shit, he's a 170 pounder standing six foot tall, 74 inch reach. Um, but the shape he's in is just like, you know, carved out of stone. He looks like mini Mauricio Shogun Hua, um, except in his prime, you know, and he trains at Kill Cliff with all the legends, all the good guys in the sport. Deerfield Beach, Florida, you know, Portugal stock. Uh, actually, on the last episode, somebody said, have there ever been a Portugal fighter in the UFC? And I said, 
Andre Fialo. And I just called, kicked him out of the out of thin air. But, uh, you know, I love Andre Fialo. Um, I really have backed him through and through in a lot of different opportunities. Uh, but, damn, three-fight losing streak all by knockout. I mean, head kick by Joaquin Buck. This is a loser leaves town fight, Luke. Both this of them are on three-fight three losing streak. And I, just, I see Fialo still here when the dust settles. That's crazy to say because Tim Dirty Bird means is nothing if not a survivor, 32 and 15 record, 39 years old. But this is a game that doesn't get easier with age. And although he will be two inches taller than Fialo, I think that uh, Fialo is going to wade the water, get inside, knock him out with a hook, uh, put him on his butt, and finish the job with Tim the Dirty Bird shelling up like a turtle. So 10 years younger, that's the big stat here. Um, I'm just hoping the line's reasonable because you shouldn't make this guy a favorite coming off three knockout losses in a row. The fights Tim means have lost, albeit two submissions. Um, it's been against two 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 pretty good guys, and uh, Fialo's losses are they they they, they for, for where Tim means is that yeah you get choked out by Kevin Allen, you get choked out by Alex Bruno, you're 40 years old, of course you are. It's crazy you're even in those fights. Uh, but if you're Andre Fialo, Jake Matthews, Joaquin Buckley, Muslim Kyle Salikov, those are three fights you should be winning. So grading on a curve. Fialo should fucking come in at plus 110. I'm going to see best fight odds to see if there's any information out here. But um, what do you guys think? Yeah, not a, not a big fan of laying any chalk on Andre Fialo. He certainly has many ways of losing fights. But at the same time, I'm Tim Means. Minus 205. I'm seeing plus 170 on Means. I think that's fair. Who? That's fair. Who's a minus 205? Fialo? Fialo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I would have loved to see some. I would have loved to see some pessimism in the market for a guy coming off three knockout losses in a row. I would have loved to see a little bit more favoritism towards a guy with a name like Tim Means. I would have loved to see an opportunity for me to bet. Maybe this is a fight no one knows about right now. I think maybe there's a chance people will bet Tim Means at plus 170 and bring this towards more of a pick as the fight gets closer. That's what I'm hoping for. But yeah. um, look, I'm thinking Andre Fiala is going to be triple B certified. For that to be a bet worth making with 70% accuracy with triple certified picks, I got to see south of two minus 200. You know what I mean? For it to be for it to be a Gianni the Greek type of bet, for it to be a smart bet to make. I never make smart bets. I make dumb bets all the fucking time. But I'm saying for it to be an algorithm, the accountant, Ben Affleck level, you know what I mean? Money. Yeah. That, that's, what, that's what I'm looking for as it, – it, it's, it's a green light, but – I bet red lights all the time. I drive through red lights. I go 90 through red lights, and I've won seven out of the last 10 weekends. We're having a great time. So, <laughs> Tim means that's way too fucking heavy. illegal. True. Yeah. Got to take the aloe. All right. Alex. All right. Well, boys, I hate to <laughs> I hate to put a damper on this party, but Fialo is one-dimensional. He has one path to victory, and it's going to be by knockout. And if he does not get that knockout, he is hittable. He is He's probably more hittable than Tim Means. I think Tim Means has more of a Sean Strickland type of striking. Um, he's not necessarily going to be there to get hit. Tim Means has only been knocked out once in his UFC career. It was by Nico Price in 2019. And guys, Bilal Muhammad is so boring. How boring is he? He's so boring, he took Tim Means to a split decision. Um, Bilal Muhammad beat Tim Means by split decision. That is not a joke. That is real. That happened in 2019 or 2017, maybe. Okay, well, yeah. 2017 is seven years ago almost at this point, so. No, oh, five, six, six, six years ago. It was at the end. It was in November, so we're getting close to that time, but. One judge scored it for Tim Means against Bilal Muhammad. Your, your guy's sweetheart. Everybody loves Bilal Muhammad. Oh, he's so cute. He's so fun. He, he has the most boring fights ever. We love him. He gets yeah. his eye poked. Okay. But fuck Bilal Muhammad. Tim Means is going to go out there and win this. Um, I just think he's more game. He's, he's much more of a veteran. He's going to be able to take everything Fialo gives him and give it right back to him. If you look at who Tim Means lost to and you look at who Andre Fialo lost to, there's a big discrepancy in uh, skill level there. And if you look at the guys Andre Fialo beat, and you look at the guy Tim Means beat. Alex, obviously, it's, if, if, if I'm telling the audience up front that it's an age play and that one guy's 10 years younger 
than the other lanky guy approaching 40. This ain't this that, ain't ladies that MMA. That tall streak, that tall string of piss Tim means uh, approaching 40. And little fucking Hercules, Andre Fialo. I mean, that's the play, Alex. It's not It's not that, yeah, of course Tim means is the better resume. He's worked longer. Andre Fialo is 29. Andre Fialo is not going to knock Tim Means out. Andre Fialo is not going to submit Tim Means. Andre Fialo is going to lose this fight. The Dirty Bird is going to make it very dirty, and Tim Means is going to win the fight. All right. I'm just telling you what's going to happen. It doesn't matter. You're it doesn't wrong. matter what the odds are, Luke. It matters what's going to happen. Do? Okay, so what are you prepared to do if you're wrong? Because I know I don't want to do a shooey bet, but how about a <laughs> how about a if okay? How about this? If uh, Tim Means loses. Um, Cut off my pinky. What, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? I want to take something from you that you enjoy. I can think of a few things. Well, lay it on me. What do you want? Starfield, your vape pen. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know well, Star, Starfield's a free game. Anybody anybody can play it at any time they I like. To, I just want you to put your knee through your Xbox. I want you to just break it. <laughs> like, oh, I like, couldn't do that. I, I would you, not. I, I want you to knee your Xbox like... GSP need Matt Sarah in the side. Oh, hump, not, hump it. That um, is something I'm not willing to risk. Now, right, self harm, well, I will. Re- I will risk self harm. Yeah, I want you to go through nicotine withdrawal and not vape for a week. <laughs> if if Nick means loses, fair enough. Fair enough. That I won't use for a week, but you won't even do it. You'll just do it because I can't. I can't monitor you, so there'll be no way to monitor you. So well, you'll know if I'm not blowing. Bat clouds on the podcast. That's that's well, one way to tell you. Yeah, I guess. But you'll just say you have to use the bathroom. True. Yeah. How about you have to do it through a shoe? <laughs> like for a week. If you want to do it, uh, you have to take a shoe, the dirtiest one you have, the one most ready for throwing away, cut a hole in it, put it right right at the right at the nose part of the shoe. You stick it through. This is not <laughs> impossible. All you need is scissors. You cut a hole in the shoe. I know. Just don't give me an out like that. Don't get me an out. It would or, be much, or, or, or it would be much harder to big, just not or, smoke. Or you it go to a sex shop and you get a big fake penis and you put the vape in that. And every time you vape from he, for for a month, because that's sanitary and clean, so it's not like it's harder. It's actually easier to do it that way. It's just more shameful if that's how you roll. I don't. I wouldn't think it's shameful. I think I think everything. I think everything's cool. But um, you do it through the fake penis uh, every time you have to do it on the show. Can we do that on the show? I don't know if we're allowed to bring sex toys to the show. All right, but you could you could do it in your personal life, and then on the show, you could put it right here. You could put it right here, and you could be like, hold on, guys, and you have to say, hold on, guys, I have to go off camera for this, and then you go off. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could do fair, that. Fair enough. I, if I'll Timmy take that. Loses, that's the bet one week. One month, actually. Four episodes, one month. Would you take that deal, Dan? I'd take that deal. It means going to get knocked the fuck out. It's crazy. I'd take it for sure. What if, so, and, I, and I have to do nothing if uh, Andre Fialo loses. The favorite. The two-to-one favorite. No, you have to buy a baby and get re I have to buy a baby and get re to the nicotine for a week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I love this. <laughs> if Andre Fialo loses, I go back to zinning for one week. I zin every day for a week. <laughs> and then I have to stop cold turkey. And suffer. No, no, no. You have to go. You have to do the hard stuff. You have to smoke cigarettes. Yes. Like, yes. I, yes. Even, I wouldn't be able to. I would start puking, dude. Like, I can't do it. I've tried. That's I, why I want, a, I want a pack a day for a week. <laughs> that's, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, my God. I would I would literally puke. Like, How dumb favorite. are you guys? Hey, you're the two to one favorite. <laughs> How dumb are you guys going to feel when Tim Means wins a split decision? I'm just happy we're going to get What's you. What's he going to do? Uh, I'm, I'm happy we're at least going to either tr- – honestly, I'm the, the, this might come back to bite me. You might just, like, trick your brain into, like, being addicted to penises. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if the wires might get all crossed up and all of a sudden you're leaving your girlfriend and you're like, I don't know why. I don't know. I can't – I don't know. I just – I have to do this one. And, and then, and then oh. Goomba is going to come on here okay. and, mm. be like, <laughs> and, and, and hit us with a – Hit us with a Manel cop type <laughs> fist fight. It. I already saw the stuff they made about me and Dan. That was messed up, man. I know. That was yeah, messed uh, up. We have, and we have it for the archives. We we have it. I, 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 
<laughs> hey, thanks for boosting my social profile, bro. It only helps me. You're only putting dollars in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> More people were like, oh, who are these guys getting into these nefarious activities on their podcast? <laughs> you think I have any shame? My Patreon's called the Fine Tooth Comb. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Well, let's get on to the next fight. <laughs> we're we're uh, pretty long into this. And we got a we got a, a fucking fight for the ages, boys. Mizaku Mizaku in UA versus Hana Goldie. Hana Goldie has an OnlyFans. Dan, what do you think about her OnlyFans? Uh I have not perused. I'm no, because why does her side hustle indicate that she doesn't want to fight? She's just getting an extra because job. You need, because to want to fight, you need to need to fight. You got to fight to live, live the fight. And you, you need to be institutionalized. You need I to- would say I am more apt to look at the fights that she's had and seen that she does not quit. She does not go for, you know, she doesn't get gassed and then go for the takedown. When she gets gassed, she still stays in the pocket and throws as hard as she can. She's throwing fastballs in there. She's throwing some heaters. So I appreciate that. There's other women who have much more, you know, uh, how should I say, uh, dainty, tactile styles where there, there's really no damage being attempted here. Hannah Goldie, she's not winning all of her fights, but she's she's throwing some heat. She's doing the best she can. So, you know, in that regard, I, I got nothing but respect. What else can I ask besides throwing a right hand as hard as you can? Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just saying I'm talking about people who want to be world champions. And if you, Alex says all the time, it's hard to get up and go running when you're taking pictures of your feet. Hey, there's only one world champ. All right. There's only one and there's a million on the roster. That's true. No, no. Let's be pragmatic here. Let's be pragmatic. Okay. She could look at herself and say, hey, you know what? I'm no Aaron Blanchfield. I'm not going to win the title. I know this, but I do love fighting. I'm going to give it my best. No, if it kills me. Right, okay. okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do take two. I don't want to shame Hunter Goldie. I feel like that's what I did a little bit. No, before. shame, 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 shame. <laughs> <laughs> She's so, a badass chick from Ohio. I she like good money on the side. Really, we, about- we, we promote entrepreneurship. That's what we're doing. <laughs> we love that. I'm not a prude. I'm not a we do We do send pictures of our feet to every patron in the Comb Club. That is true. The bigger thing I'm more concerned about is that there quite literally has never been a Japanese champion in the UFC. Now, this particular Japanese fighter in Mizuki, anyway, fights out of New York. Now, she's 14 and 6. She's coming off a loss. She's 29 years old. <laughs> born in Japan. But like I said, fights out of New York. Um, so gets that American training in. That's what we're talking about here, guys, right? We're talking about getting the submission <laughs> artist. Um, never knocked anybody out. Never been knocked out. Is she at Sarah Longo? That's a good question. It doesn't say on topology. Let's do some infer- let's do some informal. Or is she at Marcelo Garcia? No, that's not even in New York anymore. She did lose to Alexa Grasso, the champ, back in 2015 in Invicta. She lost to Carolina Kowalkiewicz by split decision right before that. And uh, you know, she started had- her career at 16 years old professionally. No credit for losses. No credit for losses. Bought Beck Rawlings at 19 years old. Uh, who is a name that people might recognize. Um, but yeah, Alex, you're, you're right. You know, it's like she's got some experience. She's done well. Um, Hannah Goldie is nothing really uh, to be fearful of. Um, here's the thing, right? This other girl wins by submission. Hannah Goldie has never lost by submission. This other girl loses by decision. Hannah Goldie pretty much only wins by decision. So my pick is Hannah Goldie by decision. Right. Uh, I'm a Hannah Goldie fan. I've been a Hannah Goldie fan. I think I've probably picked her to win all of her fights. Hasn't always worked out, but I'm going to shoot the gun at least one more time. I'm going with Hannah Goldie. She's jacked. She puts the time in the gym, and she's throwing heaters. Let's fire it up, baby. Hannah Goldie. Let's go. Um, I'm going with Inoue here. Luke mentioned it. She's got a pretty... Uh, decent background like she fought Carolina Kovalkiewicz in 2014 when she was kind of at the peak of her powers in Invicta before she even came to the UFC <clears throat> split decision loss to Verna Janaroba 
Lukey's lazy-eyed buddy. And then we got a loss to Amanda Lemish, um, a girl that everybody's pretty high on around these parts, Amanda Lemish. Uh, she didn't really have the best performance against Wei Li Zhang, but she's kicking everybody as ass apart from Wei Li Zhang and Jesse, Jesse Andrade. Um, I'm going to go with NUA here. If you're 24 carats, too much goldie in your bank account from all the OnlyFans stands looking at you and um, ogling you, you you're, you're going to want to get out of there a little quicker, dude. You, you now have two careers. One directly affects the other. If you get beat the shit out of, you're not going to be posting on OnlyFans for three weeks. You're going to want to get out of there sooner. I think that she might get submitted, Luke. Anyway, for the win. The only fans can cause she makes the world go round and makes the world feel good. The only fans. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, in this stuff? Uh, okay, so you, you, yeah, well, you're well, polishing well, them all a lot faster. You, you, you look like you have right thicker there. beers. It's orange juice, bro. Vitamin <laughs> C. You, oh, yeah. Cool. Dude. Hannah Goldie, yeah, Hannah Goldie. Okay. Do you even pay attention? Take us away, guys. Next way. Uh, no, sorry, I do pay attention. I was just trying to check the odds uh, real quick. I know, She's just Hannah Goldie. Shots. Wow, Dan, we're gonna reap some rewards here. Hannah Goldie plus two twenty five underdog. Oh yeah, let's go, baby. Well, in that case, I think I might switch, boys. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you and all of the world agree, like it's. It's Inoue, the uh, girl who lost to Amanda Lemos, who didn't win a single second of her last fight. I don't know. Yeah, the so, slender uh, little girl who's never won anything of note is going to come in there and beat the Ohioan, Hannah Goldie, who's got what, bigger arms than all of us combined. Yeah. 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 Dan, that sent me over the edge. That sent me over the edge. What does Ohio breed? Hannah Goldie. Oh, man. Was, she was a waitress and a... Uh, hairdresser, I think, or a personal trainer. She worked. No, she she worked, looks like a hairdresser. She worked at a gym, and she was a waitress <laughs> during. And then the pandemic came. The government took away all her money and her ability to make money. So she started an OnlyFans. So she's really more of a victim, and I think she should sue the government. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> uh, Charles Jordan versus Ricardo Ramos. First prelim, uh, second prelim by I don't know. It is a week's way. It might even change shift orders or whatever, but. This is a banger. I mean, this is Ricardo Ramos, uh, sexy boy, Cara Cajina, uh, 16 and four. He's uh, he's coming off that knockout win against Danny Chavez. And that was a year ago, though. You know, it's a year and a month ago. And four months ago, we saw Charles Air Jordan beat up on Cron Gracie. That is going to be looked at very disfavorably by the MMA gods. He beat up on the prodigal son. Um, you know, he's you got blood in, blood out. You got to pay some blood for that. So, Air Jordan will lose to Ricardo Ramos out of Brazil. The Brazilian God <laughs> will reward Ramos, um, and the Gracie family. They did enough for the sport. This Canadian Charles Air Jordan, he's usurped enough. Um, you know, the name Air Jordan, Air Jordan, he's usurped that. Now he usurps a winner over a Gracie with no punishments or payback. No, no, no. Uh, Brazil will have theirs, they will eat him, they'll bite his neck, they'll suck the blood. Ramos will devour uh, Air Jordan. Mark my words. Charles Jordan is going to win. Um, he well, takes a lot less damage than Ricardo Ramos. Ricardo Ramos, known for you know spinning back fists and you know these crazy techniques that rarely ever work, put you in bad positions. Uh, Charles Jordan also is really kind of fighting at a, a style that is more advantageous to actually winning fights. He was known as the, uh, you know, the, the entertaining guy previously. Now he's fighting a whole lot smarter, um, still puts up really good stats, lands a lot more than Ramos and gets hit less than La uh, Ramos. Um, all that being said, I don't think the takedowns are going to come to play whatsoever. And even if they do, Jordan's a, a black belt in his own right, I believe. Um, and he showed that against uh, Gracie. You know, no success coming there. So I, uh, I like Jordan here. <clears throat> the problem with Kron was he was raised in America, probably. So I don't think Ricardo Ramos really feels that connection with him. But Ricardo Ramos, he's with Alpha, Alpha Male, right? As he should be. Look at him. Yeah, I mean, you see this guy, Ricardo Ramos? I handsome, see him. 
handsome devil, handsome little devil he is. Charles Rodin, quite the looker himself as well. I, I, it's a different look. It's a dirtier look. I like, I like how he looks a little dirty with that, with that hair. You know, a little, not, not, not a full beard like Dan and I, but like, you know, a little something, something. Right no, not even close. Not even close. <laughs> You see um, any patches here? You see any patches? You see any sour patch? No. I've got patches. I'm, sadly, you have a much better beard than me, but you just won't grow it to, to the length it needs to be. Um, but that's besides the point. We got a guy who beat up on Bill Aljeo, somebody that the perfect parlay for Super Boys love Bill Aljeo. We love ourselves some Bill Aljeo. Dan, you love you love Bill Aljeo? King of Prussia, baby. Love him. King of Prussia. Just like the mall. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Ricardo Ramos here. If you look at who he's lost to in the UFC, it's been a murderers row, Sedner McMedoff, Leroy Murphy. I don't really like the Zubaira loss. Zubaira would somehow yeah, get a split decision. Job. He would get a split decision win against a broomstick. Like just as something not even punching at him, nothing. He still he finds a way to make his fights are so unentertaining and unwatchable, damn near. And not decisive. He never decisively wins a fight whatsoever. Um, and if the judges decided that he beat you, that means you must have had a real stinker. Did he did he fill in short notice on that or something? Did he get a stomach bug of sorts? Not no. sure. No, they actually were supposed to fight twice, and you would never guess as buyer actually pulled out pull out merchant. Um, but yeah, I like Charles Jordan. I like his strength of schedule. He's fought a lot of really tough guys. Shane Burgos, Nathaniel Wood, Julian Arosa, Lando Venata, Andre Ewell. Um, I get Andre Feely too. Like he's fought some tough dudes, but I just feel like Ricardo Ramos has a little bit more of a strength of schedule, a little bit more of a chip on his shoulder. He's out there with the alpha male guys. You see him in public with alpha male guys you can't tell that Ricardo Ramos is an absolute 10 because all those alpha male guys, they're, they're cute. You know, Alex, Alex Munoz, cute guy. They're all, they're all little cutie pies over there. So he goes out, he's got the chips. I know like, you know everybody, everybody wants to get an acting gig out there. Everyone's all, everyone's auditioning on the side, you know, headshots. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So he's, he's, around hotties all day he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder for that because he knows he's truly the hottest one of them all so ricardo ramos is going to beat up on charles air Jordan. here's the deal boy um you know we can just move on we are we are you all i gotta remember that when we all when we all gave our picks we just move on we don't need to go that, that, that's when the episodes take longer is when we go we rehash you know so anyway Mo, moseman taking on jake collier moseman did right by me nobody had him he was a big dog he was taking on uh he was taking on um junior taffa big dog taking on junior taffa i picked him and he defeated the undefeated junior taffa uh, so i'm taking him hard here again against jake collier this is exactly the type of serve up job that you'd expect Ali Abdelaziz to get the fighters that he likes on his roster. Um, Jake Collier is a serve up middleweight fat ass going to get his ass beat. Type. Yeah, you're the prototypical example of what not to do five and eight. How you got five wins. Let's talk through those five wins. Chase Sherman, John Vellante, nobody, nobody, and nobody. Uh, meaning Ricardo Abreu, Marcel Fortuna, and John, and, uh, Alberto Uda, Dan, have you ever heard of him? I guess when he beat Alberto Uda, Alberto Uda was ten and zero. Um, this guy, how the hell was he ten and zero? Um, it was at middleweight too. That was at middleweight, fourteen and four now. Um, so I mean, it, but and he's lost to. How did he get so damn fat? This guy, yo, this guy's losses. You know what? I'm actually so this guy's losses. He's zero and two in the UFC, but look at who he's lost to outside of the UFC. Mahmoud Muradov, Hanat Fakhradinov, Marvin Vittori in the UFC, Jake Collier in the UFC. So Jake Collier is a bad loss, but Marvin Vittori, Hanat Fakhradinov, and Mahmoud Muradov are pretty good losses to have, honestly. Um, are we oh, digging through Uda's, <laughs> Uda's topology right now? I'm, I'm at Alberto Uda's topology. Alberto <laughs> Emilio Pereira Uda. 39 years old, six foot three. Respect to you, my friend. You actually only have four bad we only have four losses, and they're not actually that bad, you know. 
Uh, Jay Collier is one of my favorite fighters in the UFC. He's living his best life while still being a man and fighting for a living. God respect that. He's eating that Missouri barbecue. And again, still fighting in the UFC. He's lived multiple MMA lives from 185 all the way through heavyweight. And by the way, throws more volume than most heavyweights. Almost all of them. Like, doubles up on their volume. So... The cardio is still there while still being a big boy. So the only, the only two guys he's got wins over have uh, double digit losses. Okay, well, Mohamed Usman is a freaking ultimate fighter reject loser guy. No, so he's, he's definitely he's, gonna he's, beat him. Zach Puaga on the ultimate fighter. Okay, Zach Puaga is even more of an ultimate fighter reject loser guy. That was one of the worst seasons that's ever been recorded, uh, as far as actual like fighters are concerned. Okay, guys, can I just say something real quick? Go ahead. Present share screen entire screen i'm sharing the i'm bringing out the whole ocean for this <laughs> look at the fucking guy dan is calling a loser reject whatever. he is a loser reject no, look at his form no, his form nine and and two, dude nine and two hold on hold on hold on like let's just take a look at something real quick fortis do you see this fortis that's a good gym right safe Sayud, good guy how has he lost and by what way okay so he lost he, he, he won the Ultimate Fighter, so he's not a reject. He won it. <laughs> so that's yeah, that. Then, wait, Dante Mays, okay, yeah, his third fight ever, fourth fight ever, he lost his first loss to Dante Mays. Okay, no worries. We move on. Who just knocked out Andre Arlovsky, guys? Love he got, he, it looks here, it looks like, by the way, he lost the decision to Dante Mays. Then it, here it says that, like, rear naked choke round two. Pretty deep into round two in the PFL when he's seven and zero oh, or seven he was seven and one here, and you know this guy's six and two currently. A man of all one. knockouts and submissions, no decisions. Seems like he gassed. His last win was against Mohamed Usman. Seems like he gassed. Then you go up a little bit. He finished. He wins the Ultimate Fighter and finish it and uh, wins Junior Tafa with wrestling Bro. against a dangerous undefeated striker. Now we're throwing him a guy with nine losses who's only ever beaten guys with 10 plus losses who's 34 years old and is about to get his 10th loss so he can become like all the guys he beat a washed 4-0 ufc reject they're both 34 <laughs> bro muhammad uzman is going to be huffing and puffing by round two because jake collier is going to be putting the pressure on him he's going to be backing him up behind that black line he's going to be getting him up against the fence throwing ones and twos at him like sean strickland and he's going to be shooting takedowns uzman's not going to know what is coming his way and uh, i mean think about some of the worst Gas tank jobs in the UFC. He's going to be oh, up like there. The gas tank he has is the gas tank of a Honda Civic, puke green. He works at 7 Well, guess what? Honda Civics can last a pretty goddamn long time. So, joke's on you, you fucking idiot. Jay Collier's going to get the win. <laughs> Muhammad Usman's going down. Downtown yes. Johnny Brown. It's picks like this that are the reason I'm 11. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, this, this will be one of the you know ones that put my lead further ahead this is my boy he's gonna be on the show in the near future after he sees this clip of me boosting his ass up because he's the man jay collier rodney can say, rodney. we love you but i love you i rodney, want you on the show you. jake rodney, jake welcome, i want you rodney you're welcome on the show anytime but uh i don't think you're gonna beat Mosman. how about this if you beat Mosman, you can come on the show and give me what for but if Mo yes. you, oh, this could be ever, awesome. Will you be allowed? It's gonna be to awesome. Play. I can't wait until he sticks it in your face live I'll, on the I'll comb. Fight I'll fight him. I don't. I don't give a. F <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I will meet up. We can wrestle. We can do jujitsu. We can just go bare knuckle MMA. Whatever. You oh, want. you don't want to go bare knuckle with I Jake Collier, bro. I'll go, I'll go bare knuckle MMA, but not in a parking lot because that's bro. Like, that's like fighting Scorpion in the Nether Realm. You know what I mean? That's like fighting like Raiden <laughs> in the Thunder Zone. That's like fighting uh, Sub Zero in the Ice Cave. Like it's like him in a parking lot. If it's an Applebee's parking lot, he's OP. He's overpowered. Oh, dude, he'll knock your ass out and then grill a steak on your bare <gasps> back, Missouri style, baby. Barbecue. Let's he'll grill go. A steak in my back. No, he'll go in and he'll get the appetizer. <laughs> Anyway, so Alex. I guess I'll break the tie here. Um, I'm gonna go with Mo Usman. Break it. You're a fucking idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
All right, everybody get something out. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't want... All right, timestamp. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Alex and I uh, have come to an agreement. So... We're going to troll be certified Mo Usman. No. No. <laughs> no. No, Luke is on Mo Usman. I don't know how much of that we're going to cut out. Luke is on Mo Usman. Dan is on Jake Collier. And I still haven't made a pick. <laughs> I'm going to go with Mo Usman here. If you look at Jake Collier, ever since he got all fat and disgusting, he's lost five fights at heavyweight. All Five of his losses are at heavyweight. One's at light heavyweight. He had two losses at middleweight. As to, three. So as soon as he decided he was going to become a big body, wide body Calabasas, he he decided he was losing a lot of his fights. He's lost three in a row at heavyweight. Andre Arlovsky, Chris Barnett, Martin Bidet. Um, granted, the guys that he's lost to heavyweight are pretty good, but the guys he's beat absolutely suck. Gian Vellante is even more fat, even more disgusting <laughs> than Jay Collier, which is hard to do. Uh, and Chase Sherman... The Vanilla Gorilla sucks. Guys, Dan, please reconsider. And 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 think. Oh, no, and let Dan, let Dan, you know. Reconsider before next week. I was actually, before the uh, Ramos fight, I was looking and I'm like, Fazeev, Ige, Rodriguez, Fialo, Goldie, Ramos, Usman. I'm like, well, all these could, besides Usman and Ramos, and in my opinion, Fialo, but I know you disagree, Alex. Goldie, Rodriguez, Ige, and Fazeev. I was like, these could all be wrong. Like, those could, those four could all be flipped. Like, um, they're close. Like, this is a weird card. I want to say this, you know, seven out of ten of the last fights I have uh, won on. But, like, this is a card where I'm like, there's not a lot that's, that jumps out and screams at me. I'm going to be honest. There's I, I like this card. Yeah. I like this card as a fan. I like you. it as a gambler. I think it's... Uh, Montserrat Rendendo versus Tamaris Vidali. Uh, oh, this is a fight where I don't know either of these people. And yeah. uh, I can't wait for somebody in the comments. You're a casual. You don't know Montserrat Rendendo? <laughs> no, I don't know Montserrat Rendendo. I know Tamaris Vidal. Now that I see her picture, I recognize her. Yeah, let's see. She, she fought Ramona Pasquale. That's her only fight in the UFC was against Ramona Pasquale. She, she TKO'd her with a flying knee. Now, Ramona is a tall drink of water. So if she she's 5'6". Let's see something real quick. How tall is Big Ramon? That, <laughs> he, that she, Big Ramona is 5'7". Okay. But she's my big. Ramona. <laughs> but big. Ramona's big. big. But she looks big in there. And I mean that in the best possible way. I love Ramona. But here's the thing. Tamara's big Spidal, is beautiful. I was just thinking flying knee. Like you had to get up pretty high to knee her in that. But no, only 5'7". Okay. So that's fair. Um, it's all for a lady. So you got the Brazilian coming off the knockout win against the Mexican, making her debut, Montserrat. Who's 5'8". Even uh, more of a giant than Ramona Pasquale. <laughs> no, she's a big giant, 5'8". Ten months ago, she fought to a split decision with a 4-4 four and four girl. I'm taking Mon- uh, Tamara Svidal. That's all I need to know. All of her, she she fought she fought a no and no girl in her debut. She fought a one and no girl in her second fight. She fought a two and one girl in her third fight. She fought a three and two girl in her second fight, and she fought a four and four girl in her fourth <sighs> fight. And now she is five and zero oh, um, here. You know what I mean? It's like okay, we get it. You fought nobody. You are nobody. You're nine years older. <laughs> I'm kidding. She's not nobody, but you fought nobody. You're nine years older than Vidal. Vidal is seasoned. She's fought in the UFC. Nine year age gap. Fighters lose at a sixty seven percent rate or more. And people making their debut also lose at a rate of 67% or more. So I'm thinking that Renendo is done here. She's not, she's going to come in, blow up on the launch pad. Yeah, I'm going to roll with Vidal as well on this one. I think this is pretty cut and dry, very easy fight to call. A it's way cut and dried. <laughs> cut and dry. What the fuck? It's cut and dried. You got to. You know, it's cut and it's dried. It's been dried, you know. Cut it out. Alex, that was a mistake. That's a mistake a lot of people make, but it's no need for you to bring out that word we had to cut out earlier, Dan, okay? Just (laughs) It's a mistake a lot of people make. Let's see. Cut and dried. It's cut and dried, Alex. Sorry, it's not cut and dried. (laughs) I guess if if it is cut and it is dry... Then it has been cut and dried. So I, I don't like that I even did that to you, Alex. I'm sorry about that. 
<laughs> yeah, cut that part out. Cut that part, cut out. That part out. Um. In this episode, dude, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna anticipation, roll. Alex. I saw that coming too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with the doll. She's got the UFC experience. She hasn't only gone to split decisions in her career against people we've never heard of, and she hasn't lost a grappling match against the head case Juliana Miller, one of those tenth planet freaks <laughs> that we were talking about earlier. Uh, yeah, the doll all the way. Sorry, sorry, Juliana, you didn't deserve that. <laughs> Daniel Argueta, the determined one, versus Miles. Can Scott. I make a pick? Have a pick? <laughs> do you have to? All right, do one. I have to. I'll say this. Gore Vidal, one of the most respected intellectuals of the 20th century. There's some sort of bloodline here with Tamiras Vidal, right? There has to be. I'm expecting a very educated game plan from Tia and Tamiras Vidal going into this fight. I think she's going to get it done. A lot of uh, finishes on her record. I expect another finish as well. Triple P certified Tamirez Gore Vidal. She might even be related to Rafael Vidal. Are you thinking tennis. of the tennis player? Yeah. His last name's not Vidal. It's uh, Nadal. Nadal. Yes, there you go. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> we are going to get on to the next fight, which is Miles John versus Daniel Argueta. Chapo versus the Determined. What do you think about this one, Lieutenant Dan? Mm. So Argueta, he's he's the guy with the wrestling background, no? Um, he had he's, that. He's one of the Ultimate Fighter loser rejects who lost the Ultimate Fighter <laughs> we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Listen, if it's not Contender Series, I really don't give a who. Okay, everyone knows the Ultimate Fighter is so 2007. It's uh, it's not where the good fighters come from. Let's just say that, especially Muhammad Usman. That being said, um, I'm gonna go with Miles Johns here. I feel like uh, Argeta. His main thing is wrestling, but Johns has a, a collegiate wrestling background in his own right, and he's heavy-handed. He comes with that that left hook, um, and he's going for blood. So I like a guy that's going for the finish. I feel like Johns is due. Um, you know, not I, I. I like my spots in the main card. It's when we get to the prelims that's a little bit more shaky. Um, that being said, I'm. I'm I'll, I'll rock with John's here. He's he's lost faith with us before. I mean, the, the Castaneda loss wasn't great. He kind of got beat pillar to post. Same thing with Mario Batista. Um, and he doesn't have the best wins in the world. If you're looking at the, the Vince Moraleses and the uh, Kevin Atividades. But I'm not super high on Argeta as well. So this this might be a Miles John's win. Yeah, I'm going to roll with Miles John. I wasn't very high on Argetta, but he had a great performance against Ronnie Lawrence. Wasn't he, like, choking him unconscious and the ref pulled him off before? The yeah, he, he won, but he didn't win officially. Yeah, that sucked for the parlay that night. I, I, I was pretty heavy on Argetta. But um, I'm going to roll with Miles Johns. I don't really like what I see out of Argetta. He has had some some good fights since his tenure in the Ultimate Fighter. Um going 3-0 after that, then losing to Damon Jackson, and then winning his last two in the UFC, as far as I'm concerned. He dodged a bullet against Isaac Dolgari, and though you, you fight him, you're not coming back. Um, I'm going to roll Miles Johns here. I just think the experience is there. Hopefully that gas tank is a little better. He's coming out of Fortis MMA, a way better camp than Jackson Winklejohn. Um, you mean yeah. Jackson Stinklejohn? Yes, I meant that exactly, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, Miles Johns is, is Luke here paging Dr. Lukey, paging Dr. CK? Are you are you around? Are you here? Are we got to do a away? seance. Yeah, <laughs> Luke is Luke in this world? <sighs> I've come back. Yes, Miles Johns versus. Uh... <laughs> we don't need to set it up. We set it up for you. Who do you think is going to win? Did you think we were just waiting here? <laughs> I think Luke had some acid reflex. I could tell by his breathing. Yeah, something happened. Either that or... <laughs> I have a sick belly from, from the run. 
I basically what happened was this, everybody. So my uh, significant other is on our way home and on my way to get another beverage, I uh, noticed there was some toys all over the floor. So I quickly scrambled and picked them all up in a matter of seconds. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it might have saved me. You know, when she comes home, she might see the clean floor and be delighted instead of uh, messing with that. So, uh, <laughs> and then I ran back because I heard your guys' voice and I got a little bit of a sick belly. So Daniel Arquette had that really, really great, uh, impressive premature stoppage over Ronnie Lawrence. Remember that? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, every stoppage I ever have is a little premature. <laughs> so I'm going with uh, Danny. All right, perfect. Danny Argetta? Yeah, I, I rode him in that last fight. I want to ride him again here. All right. Luke riding the horse that got him there. Next Brian up. Battle, our boy, the guy that broke our relationship with Ian Gary versus AJ Fletcher. Uh, it's, AJ it's funny how the, the webs we weave. That, that is the webs we weave <laughs> in this show. <laughs> that is what got you guys in terrible favor with Ian Gary. Just because he was talking crap on Pooh Bear and not a kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's all, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. We called Brian Battle deluded. Um, which is worse than what I think right? he meant to say, which was probably delusional, but diluted makes it seem like he's like reduced, you know? Watered uh, down. Yeah, <laughs> watered down. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not so unrealistic to think that Brian Battle uh, could be an opponent for Ian Gary. Pooh Bear is ranked what? Let's see. Not, not ranked. I guess, I mean, he's had so many. F- Fights at this point, he lost a hot. He lost it, not Fakra Dinov, um, who cut through you know Kevin Lee like a hot fucking knife through butter, um, and then he knocked out Gabe Green. So yeah, he beats the ghost here, I think, and uh, makes it happen against Ian in the future. So I'm going with uh, Brian Battle. Ten inch reach advantage, everybody. Oh, AJ Fletcher, his ale. His ape index is bad. <laughs> he's yeah. Pale. He's pale as shit. He, that's why they call him the ghost. He's I Dustin won't. Poirier's bitch. I hate Dustin Poirier. I want to take shots at anybody who's even close to that man. And that's why it pains me that Joe Selecki, that's his favorite fighter, pains me. Um, <laughs> it's really what separates us or divides our friendship in a lot of ways. It makes us not able to be as close as we could be because I – genuinely detest uh Poirier and his game. <laughs> and same with Theo Vaughn. Same with Theo Vaughn. I like Theo Vaughn, but I can't I can't ever get close to him. I know that. Because these Louisianians, they stick together, you know. And I'm not from a swamp. Um, you know. You're from a sacrifice zone. I'm from a sacrifice zone, exactly. It's a, it's a swamp in other ways. The the, 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 the the when I step in the mud, it's not mud, it's or it's, it's oral. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have no idea what it is. It's, it could be oil. It, at best, it's oil, but it probably is something much worse. Train derailment, oil, uh, chemical spill. But anyway, guys, listen, it's not about us. It's about finishing our enemies. Um, we took out Dustin Poirier with Justin Gaethje. Maybe we take out not only Ian Gary, because he obviously wants Brian Battle not to succeed, but we take out AJ Fletcher. It hurts Dustin Poirier. It hurts Ian Gary. Brian Battle to hurt two of my enemies in one fell swoop with a case here's here's what you're missing though luke uh you're a stone cold steve austin guy are you not you did shave your head and stone cold stun just about everyone on the campus of your university well, now aj fletcher his last win was against fembo garimbo and after he won that bout he did a b and e on his home which the rock purchased for him and he ransacked that place. Wait, what? So, no, that was when Themba Garimbo didn't even have a home. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Check, that the was when he was, I, Check the timeline. Check the timeline. What? Check the timeline on that. Uh, regardless, I, I see where you're going on this. I, I just think that AJ Fletcher needs a little bit more credit based on uh, your hey, fanhood hey, of The Rock Cold. wouldn't buy a house for a loser, Dan. Well, he, he did. He, he had to get he a win that. first. He had to get a win first. And then right, right. he got the house. Against uh, Sato, right? Takashi, yeah, six nine. Takashi six nine. Uh, the pick is Brian Battle. Ten inch reaches. Uh, whew, that's hard to overcome, especially a guy coming off a uh, 
electrifying knockout. Yeah, I'm definitely going with Pooh Bear here as well. That reach advantage is crazy. They're pretty close in age. Uh, and, you know, Dan wants to put a lot of weight on this beating up a homeless man. If you beat up a homeless man where we're from, that's that's bad news. You do not beat up the homeless man. You do not roll around in the mud with them. You will get sick. Um, we've seen it numerous times, especially from these boys. They're, they're city savvy. They, they're a couple of New Yorkers. Um I'm just a country boy living, living, living my life. Um, I guess I'll just kick off the next fight since we're solo potting right now. I will. Uh, I was actually debating whether I was going to show everybody us breaking down Strickland versus Adesanya because it's actually pretty good. Go back in the most recent episode we did. Watch Strickland versus Adesanya. Watch us re-break that down and watch us be right again. And watch it soon because we take the episodes down. We'll say that. We'll say that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, next up we. Jacob Malkoon versus Cody Brundage. Cody Brundage. I thought he retired. Am I thinking of somebody else? I thought that Cody Brundage, after he lost to Cedriscus Dumas, he took his gloves off in the cage and retired. Am I mistaken? Or was that somebody else who is absolute garbage? Who are you thinking of? Cody Brundage. Who he lost his? No, 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 no. You're mixing him up. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, he took his gloves off, but I don't think he retired. I think he just. I don't know. Took I guess he didn't retire because he's fighting here. But yeah, that was a piss poor, pitiful performance. Malcoon all day. Nothing else to be said. I don't reward bad behavior. I reward good behavior. And uh, Malcoon has two bad losses, but they're not that bad. So. Can't argue with that logic. Uh, Cody Brundage is. It's just not it, man. Especially coming. Uh, I think he's a last-minute replacement, so a guy that has a bad gas tank is going to be even more drained going into this one. Um, I think Malkoon has got the striking to get it done and the wrestling. Give me Malkoon. Yeah, Cody Brundage sucks. I wish he did retire. He should have retired. He probably shouldn't have gotten into this profession whatsoever. You got absolutely ragdolled by... Cedriscus Dumas, the guy who Josh Frem took down and made quick work of. Um, you're getting out-wrestled by a guy who doesn't wrestle. That is the biggest tell of somebody whose heart is not in it, not very good. Jacob Malkoon can crack, and he's also got a slick ground game. Jacob Malkoon here. I would imagine he's a minus 5,000 favorite against Cody Brundage, though. Like, Cody Brundage is so bad. Word up. Well, listen... Dan, you're going to do your pick? He already did. Perfect. So run through, I'm going to run through mine, and then you guys run through yours, and uh, then we'll grab uh, – we'll, we'll, we'll get out of here. Dude, dude Luke, is, Luke is skittering around like mom is coming home, and he just ate – No, no, no. no. Just, <laughs> he is like – he is so worried for his significant other and their – I'm removing you. I'm removing you. It's not nah, he I'm is, not he is I, running around and cleaning during the podcast. No, I was trying to. I heard the baby crying in the room, so I didn't want to uh, have that on the camera. If it was going to continue, it has stopped now. So I was just trying to wrap up quickly. Fair enough. <laughs> we got to go with the fine tooth comb, fine though. I was, trying to, I was trying to read off my picks real quick so I could remove myself like that, and then my audio would be off. But um, and then I could address the, the crime baby. But uh, that being said, so let's just go through the picks, like cool guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, no. um, from for me, it's gonna be Jacob Malku, Brian Battle, Daniel Arguetta, Tamara Spadal, Muhammad Usman, Ricardo Rodriguez, Ricardo Ramos, uh, Hannah Goldie, Andre Fialo, Marina Rodriguez, Danny Gay, and Rafael Fazit. All right, and if you're rolling with me, you're going with Mateus Gamrot, Dan Ige, Marina Waluigi, Rodriguez, Tim the Nerdy Bird Means, Mizuki Inoue, Ricardo Ramos, Mohamed Usman, Tamirez Vidal, Miles Johns, Brian Battle, and Jacob Malkoon. Dan. All right, riding with your boy. You're going with Rafael Fiziv, Dan Ige, Marina Rodriguez, Andre Fialo, Hannah Goldie, Charles Jordan, Jake Collier, 
Tamirez, Gore Vidal, Miles Johns, Brian Battle, and Jacob Malkoon. That's a perfect parlay if I've ever heard one. I love it. I'll be telling both of your parlays, and the trophy sort of picks are going to be from bottom to top, Jacob Malkoon, then we got Brian Battle, first two were in lockstep. Tamaris Vidal, Andre Fiu. No, sorry. Andre Fiu is not sure certified. We have a big bet. Alex will have to vape through a dildo in the future. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Or shoe. We'll say. Or shoe. I don't think he... Okay. Danny Gay, Marina Rodriguez, Tamaris Vidal, uh, Brian Battle, and Jacob Malku. Five sure be certified picks for you next week. And. Um, Beautiful. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Please join the Patreon. It really does help. And we need the Patreon members to join for a full year because I've been thinking a lot lately. We should start gambling with the Patreon money. So we always think <laughs> if, no if, shit. If, 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 if like a good choice right pick, like we just all put all the money on the pick, you know, and just make it a little fun. Let's gamble. So that should be like our promise to the audience is like we'll build the money up, make gigantic bets. Uh, I think we have friends who have had similar issues thousand, with things imagine, like this. <laughs> imagine a thousand of the Patreon money, a thousand bucks on Sean Strickland, and it was plus 500. Like, that's five grand. You know what I mean? And we have a lot of these be certified dogs that we all agree on. I think we should start exploiting our edge, getting the Patreon money involved in our gambling bets. And uh, if you join the Patreon, if you're a monthly member, give us that full year. We need that 100 up front. Um, it's 100 for the full year. It's nothing. It's chump change. I literally won $1,100. I posted that bet in the Patreon last week. It's chump change. So get in there, join, give us your money to gamble with. Thank you very much. And we I'm in for the gambling, but it cannot be sitting in Luke's account. Uh, it will be. And and I, I'm so trustworthy. Chill, dude. I'm so trustworthy. I'm, I'm more worried about your decision making than your trust. I, I trust you. I just don't trust your decision making. We'll make the decision together. We'll place the bet. Okay. Anyway, everybody, we're just joking, but also give us your money. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> only and uh, join us in the Patreon. We're going in there right now to break down Alex Grosser versus Valentine Chenko. What's your name? Valentine? Shevchenko. Val- nah, Valentina. I'm like, Valentine, that sounds right, but wrong. Valentina Shevchenko. Valentina Shevchenko to with a fine tooth comb, breaking it down in the Patreon yet again for the second time, going through all of our picks. And guys, um, we're also going to. What are we also going to Alex, help, help me out here. Help me out. Um, I'm also going to apologize to you right now because I talked you off of the Packers last week and I told you that the Bears were going to win and they got absolutely demolished. Mm. No, that wasn't what broke me. I picked the Packers. It was uh, or, or it was it, it was the Bengals. Yeah, the Bengals. The Bengals actually were one of the only Dolphins. Legs. Great, great underdog pick with the Dolphins. Great underdog pick with the Jaguars. Great underdog pick with the Raiders. Great underdog pick with who else did we get? I think we got one more in there too that we picked either way i mean we, we we gave people some good football picks week one um the only two that i got wrong were yeah the uh the Bengals really the crushed all my parlays the Bengals and the bears actually there's the two the Bengals and the bears yeah the cowboys 40 to nothing jesus we them boys shout out and to the game, but i am a little bit worried about what's that guy jeffries jefferson on the vikings Who's justin jefferson is he on the vikings yes sir D- yeah. Jetta. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be tough, right, to get past you know, with the Eagles. And, uh, you know, they're not – No, the Vikings oh, sucked. They're, they just they're, lost scared to, they're scared to let Hurts run fucking touchdowns. You notice this? Hurts was running touchdowns into the end zone at a rate of 50% last season a game. Every other game he was in the end zone. First game of the season, you don't want to rally the boys and get your quarterback in the end zone when you need touchdowns. We're kicking field goals all day. We're not having, but because because it was raining, they didn't want him to get hurt. But I'm worried that Sirianni's like, we don't want him hurt early in the season, so we're not going to run him until like eight games in. You know, don't I run him that, against bad teams that you can win without him running. I think yeah, that the main issue won. We barely won, Dan. Luke, no, it's I mean, a win. It's not going to show up as a win. It's a win. They brought, they brought Tom Brady out there, and we had to. We should have been in that end zone in Tom's face. <laughs> the big, big problem, Luke, with the Jalen Hurts rushing touchdown prop bet was this past week the offense was so bad that they couldn't get into the spot where they do it. Like I feel like most of his touchdowns were QB sneaks. Right, Let's keep talking to the Patreon. We got a big episode to do, everybody, you guys. If you want more football talk, if you want more perfect parlay, if you're this, if you're still watching this point and you're not in the Patreon, shame on you. Get in there. We love you. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Never forget, Rory McDonald was a big favorite and he lost that fight. <laughs> it can happen. <laughs>
Thank you.